We've dueled to save the world. We've dueled to graduate high school. But that was the past. And this is the era of Turbo Duels. Join us as Shibuya Gato. Mr. Yusei, I don't feel so good. Shora. When, if, when your back's against the wall, you gotta give it your all. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Calamity Carl. They're giving him the curry back shots. Jeez. I'm gonna fucking get you. And Bio Roxas. A lot of parents like leaving and not coming back for their kids. Definitely not dead, though. <laughs> Absolutely not. What would ever give you that idea? <laughs> Use the power of the Millennium Microphone to race to the finish and discover what the five Ds even means. Killing out with the... Oh, that's the wrong series. Hold on. Yeah. Unfortunately, no, it's the best it's intro the quote I could come up with was based on you saying... On, on the fucking bit of Jack going, well, give us a fucking, like, give, give us a rousing speech, you say. And I swear to God, I thought he was about to just say the Bakugan intro verbatim. <laughs> well, if he was going to do the Bakugan intro, he would have had to have the, the like, whole opening narration before goes, the music kicks in. He goes, give us a speech, you say, and you say just stares around like wide eyed and goes, I threw up. That's and they great, go, you, you what? And he goes, Bleh! and they're like, oh my God. My son's done that before. <laughs> yeah, with young kids, I believe Pretty it. Pretty common, yeah. I threw up. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, hey, what's up? Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, uh, How are you doing? It's, it's been a, a bit since we dropped an episode. Uh, life keeps happening, but uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is still here waiting for when shit calms down. So, hey, what's up? We're gonna we're gonna talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. But uh, before we talk are about, we, we, when's the last time we did do a podcast? Uh, we took, two weeks ago. We took a week break. So yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago, right? Well. Normally we do it every other week, right? but hold on. But then we we didn't last week. Wow, oh, you're confusing me yeah, and on. us. I'm I'm oh, checking. No. I'm checking. Yeah. So last time we recorded was the seventh. I thought it'd been a while. Yeah, the three weeks. Shit. Despite primarily talking about. Uh, a card game anime and all the math it entails. Math sometimes is not our strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, what is our song? Our strong suit. Our our strong. Our yeah. What we're good at. Okay, you'll get there, man. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Do you guys know that Yu-Gi-Oh! happened? Holy Everyone, shit. welcome to uh, Carl's TCG update. Yeah, we're, we're talking like about the fucking list. card game, baby. I, I expected this. Yeah, go ahead. It was like a ban list you were waiting on for like five days or something. That says that was a different. We already. I think we talked about that one already. Uh, there, <laughs> there was the ban list. There's the tin with the reprints that they're there making were just to two, upcharge. Oh, two ban lists. Oh, we got the TCG and OCG ban list. Oh yeah, right. Because the OCG is finally starting to kill God. <laughs> The, uh, the the oh. first big thing is that Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, is uh, no longer existent anywhere except Master Duel. That's oh, Which yeah. good. Rip in peace, bozo. Fuck you. Damn. Eat shit, fafa. What? That sounds <laughs> And uh, the, the, the OCG also limited a lot of cards. A lot of cards. They brought back a lot of fucking things. Limited a lot didn't of things. They, didn't they finally semi-limit Max C? Yeah. Yup. They're killing God. They They're finally doing finally, it. Finally, finally hit La Cucaracha and everyone's excited about it. Honestly, well, like, I still, I'm still of the opinion that Max C and, like, Pot of Greed could easily be one of. Nope. No Max C. Nope. Never. Not I, once. I, I think one of Max C is fine. Nope. You just have to hard limit it. No, nope. Shut up. Do not bring Carl, it back at are, all. Carl, you are Pot of Greed's biggest fucking defender. I think Max C... Sorry, would be an Max okay card C, to have it. Max C gets you even more cards than Pot of Greed and can decide games more than Pot of Greed could. Yeah, but it can also be used as a fucking, like, fuck you, 
stop your combo card. No, it's bad. It's a bad card. I don't want it. It's evil. It's, you know what they should get rid of? It's, it's awesome. fucking... Yeah. They probably it's should, but they're card. too much of cowards. I think hand traps suck. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> I think hand traps make the game less fun. You know what else makes the game less fun? When they put out a quality product like Dueling Mirrors, the new Mega Tin. Yeah. Honestly, I'm it's excited bad. for that tin. It's bad, <laughs> fellas. It's real bad. Uh, is, is this the the uh, the tin with the quarter century? Uh... There are a shitload of quarter centuries in that tin. Yes. No, I I mean specifically the the um. Oh God, what are they called? Um. Exodia pieces? Well, I mean, I would like to know if there are quarter century Exodia pieces in a product, yes. All but... of the Exodia pieces now have quarter centuries. Shibuya, yeah! you'll be happy to know that every all of them in that set are currently going for like $3 each. Oh, I need to hop on that. I need to hop on that. Yeah. There's <laughs> also a Toon Kingdom quarter century rare. There's a light and darkness dragon. There's a scapegoat. Oh, the right. alternate art winged Karibo. Shora, um, I have to shoot you with figure announcements because they're making figures of Toon monsters. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> let's fucking go. Hold on. Of course I don't have fucking money, but let's fucking go. So uh, I'm I'm gonna put this in the Twitch chat, just the link to the TCG player page for this set that Carl's talking about. Because if you like old school cards, if you just like to collect shiny cardboard and not meta relevant cardboard, it's a good fucking set. It's a really good set. Yeah, I I do like me shiny cardboard, and I don't give a shit about meta. Um, One of the most expensive cards in the set is $27 ship. Oh. Uh, and it's the original Art Blue Eyes Quarter Century. Fuck! I've never owned an original Art Blue Eyes! Fuck them! God damn it! Dude, oh. 20, like, 27 bucks is not bad for that. I don't... I think that's also one of the, I think that's one no, of the, like, sure. promo card potentials. Yeah, no, I see them. They're great. I yeah, no, them. the I fact them. that it's blue and red eyes and they're facing opposite directions is really good. They also made versions I'm gonna, for I'm gonna gods, have to yell at double to buy them for me. Yeah, uh, they're Mega House figures, so they're gonna be a little pricey, but uh, really I can attest to the Mega House figures also being good quality. Like, these are solid. These are not hollow figures. Now, the thing about these tins that everyone was excited for was the reprinting of some very powerful cards. Yeah. Like Bonfire and SP Little Knight, Triple mm -hmm. Tactics Thrusts, uh, the Diabell Star stuff. They're like, oh, it's going to be reprinted at a lower rarity. It's going to be more affordable. There's still secrets. Shora? Yeah? You lied to me. TCG player. Exodia head. Quarter century. Near mint $30. <laughs> yeah, 30. Bitch, that one was a promo from an earlier set. You should have was, that yeah. one by now. Uh, I don't know if I do. Get fucked. Uh, also, worst case scenario, you have to pay. You have to pay, like pay a little extra for some head. Whatever. I... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't even fault you for that one. That was good. <laughs> the other thing is just like all the quarter century secret rares. Like, yeah, there's some good old cards in there, but also there's like the gadgets. Yeah. There's two <clears throat> fucking two tokens in the secret slot for some reason. You only get one secret per pack, and there's only three packs in each tin. Yeah, the the in terms of value, the tins are not good for buying like tins. In terms of uh like singles, phenomenal. Singles. Set. Yeah, go go for go for the singles, fellas. Don't be like me. I bought five of them. Uh, uh some more highlights that I'm actually really excited about. Seal of Ori Calcos, quarter century. It looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah, that's huge for you. Honest quarter century. Oh. Ameritech Fortress Dragon. Fucking Link All right. Spider. All right, but see, those last three that you mentioned are useful. <laughs> they're yeah. good for old formats. <laughs> yeah, and they're currently like 70 cents each. You Bell nice. is getting a quarter century secret rare. I know. That one's going to be a lot of money. And Shibuya? There are Kaiba and Yugi tokens in this. I've seen the Yugi token. I need him. They're very good. Um, they're, I um, was going to say they're probably pretty cheap because they are the ones that no one wants to get. Yeah, like I want to get them. Uh, oh, the winking winged Karibo quarter century is so cute. It is Hold cute. On. I, and I the fact so... that he's affordable because he's only like a dollar twenty. 
the Axel Synchro Stardust QCR is only three dollars. That's actually him. tempting. Look at him. That's Umfi. I love Very him. Good. I would die for him. I'm so Aww. glad that Toon Kingdom got reprinted in this set, dude. Because you uh, know when what? I uh, when I opened my packs, I was like, if I get one, I'm just sending it to Shora. Hell yeah! Didn't get one. Fucking every cop, like every printing of Toon Kingdom is at least like ten bucks. Now, quarter century rare, two bucks. I can actually start working on a Toon deck physically. The only card that I I have to look at and go, ugh, is gonna be fucking Black Luster Soldier Toon and the the BLS Link. I think. I will say that it, the single prices for a lot of the chase cards have actually like dropped pretty substantially which is really good sp little knight is now only 50 dollars instead of 120 that's so really yeah. good yeah that's pretty damn good oh my god fucking quarter century snatch deal 53 dollars i understand yeah, it's right. goat but um, jesus sounds about right something that everyone should know about quarter century rares however mm -hmm. since they are the gimmick for this year and this year is quickly coming to a close mm -hmm. <clears throat> Quarter century rares will only ever have one printing per set. Meaning, unless it's an alternate art, if a card is printed in a quarter century rarity, it will not be reprinted in another set at that rarity. This is something Konami has said actively. Yeah. So, if you get Dark Magician quarter century, like, ages ago... You ain't getting it in the future. So. So hop on the say, singles just, you just like say. while they're here and while they're cheap. Those prices will go up. Basically. Yeah. Uh, given that the quarter century exists entirely to celebrate the 25th anniversary, this makes perfect sense. Uh, this is the one time I'll justify yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! rarities because, like, these look good. I own a couple of them. Quarter centuries are just gorgeous. And the fact that, like, you have the kind of matte finish on the text box with the 25th logo is really nice. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's just, uh, if you don't get into Yu-Gi-Oh! to actually play it, and you don't care about, like, a triple tack quarter century, effect veiler, if you don't give a fuck about shit like that, I would say just hop on the singles you like, because right now U-Bell's $2, yeah. uh, and that's, like, actually reasonable. <laughs> like, Rescue Seeing Cat, $3. Setting. Seeing Imseti Glory of Horus at $18 instead of $90 makes me happy. Oh, yeah. Uh, should be another couple of very funny picks. Yeah. Uh, Crystal Beast, Ruby Carbuncle, quarter century rare. Funny. There are only two cards in the entirety of the Crystal Beast archetype with quarter century rarities now, and it's Ruby Carbuncle and Rainbow, Rainbow Dragon. Rainbow Dragon. <laughs> makes perfect sense, yeah. And then the other one that they chose... Ido, the Supreme Magical Force. Aww. <laughs> That's... You remember. You remember him from Luna's Duel, right? <laughs> no. No, I oh, you don't. Oh, is it that you... fucking dragon thing? The force yeah. field fucker? Fuck that. Ew. You, you, don't, you don't remember the big blue, like, kind of dragonic fucking looking thing? Yeah, he was torturing her in the forest, and I had that dude who was like, let me in your brain, Luca. Ugh. Ugh. Hey, good news. Tour guide yeah. from the Underworld, quarter century, 13 bucks. That's actually shockingly reasonable compared yeah. to what I was expecting. That's, that's, not, that's not bad. Yeah. There are a lot of really actually well-priced quarter century rares like across all of the sets that have come out. Yeah. And I now for the bad rare. news. Mm. Oh. The next uh, main core set, Rage of the Abyss, is coming out in a couple weeks. Yeah. And it has three meta-defining cards as secret rares. I did see uh, that, yeah. Yep, I saw. I've mostly been seeing, like, uh, specifically discourse over whether uh, Fuolos is actually good or not. <laughs> We all knew Fuolos would be, and then it was like, here's a Dominus Impulse. And I was like, yeah, that's all, that does also make sense. And then they showed off the Azamina cards in the new Sinful Spoil stuff. And I was like, oh, thank God, all of it's low rarity. I don't really need that many. This is going to be, where is the one I need three copies of? Oh, did they lie about It's this, not actually? on this list. And then it turns out yeah. it was a secret rare. Yeah, that's rough, buddy. Wait, that's gonna be Crimson a Dragon. lot of money that I don't have. I'm so oh, sad. No, that's okay. Wait. 
What do you mean they made a quarter century of the unstoppable Exodia incarnate? Yeah, oh. that's awesome. Hey, fifty dollars is not awesome. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> this this set's going to kill me. With like, this is going to be death by a thousand cuts for me because I really want to buy these singles. I don't have, I don't have money right now, so I'm gonna have to fucking wait probably. But I, I have the Exodia quarter century head. I need to finish that set. I I, I think I bought it. a tin and I think I got the head. So I I just have to double check my folder of singles. Um, but I'm I'm fairly sure. Uh, also, Magician Souls fourteen bucks for a quarter century is shockingly good. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's like actually the, really good for a playable card. The most expensive quarter century rare, surprising no one, is Dragon Mas Master Magia, because yeah. uh, fuck you, they only printed that in quarter century rare. Still mad about it. Yeah. Hey, and it's no. so bad. It's so bad that people on TCG Player are actively selling Korean and Japanese ultra rare copies instead of the actual quarter century. I see those listings regardless of what card we're talking about. Like I'll see Korean and Japanese listings trying to undercut prices. I only prices. see those on the listing but when I click on that card. Sure, I want you to understand. Uh, so sometimes I'll watch uh, Yugi Tuber Ruxin thirty four. Uh, R U X I. Oh, I've, uh, yeah. His unboxing he's opened shit. What, like he, he's opened multiple cases, now? cases looking for that one card, and he has not pulled it. He has spent thousands on boxes looking for this one singular card. That's my fucking goat. Fucking, he has a problem. Uh, he does. It's called he opens uh shit that I want to buy. Uh, because he opened Retro Pack, and I was like, oh. I should buy Retro Pack, and I don't have the money to buy Retro Pack right now. It's fucked. <laughs> Fucking mood. Oh god, Retro Pack looks so good, but I wish they had, like, booster boxes and not just the shitty little cardboard boxes where you open it up and it's four packs. I do really like Quarter Century Rarity, though. It's just, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, a it's fun one of the nicer rarities Yu-Gi-Oh! has dropped. Because, like... They've... They've given us cards in that rarity that are so fucking good, and some cards that are really fucking dumb. But yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, I I always think that, like, in terms of the quality of uh, rarities, Pokemon is outclassed Yu-Gi-Oh! Universally? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it's, it's uh, really nice to see Yu-Gi-Oh! stepping up its game in, like, Western rarities. I, I say this specifically because... I think OCG Yu-Gi-Oh cards and a lot of those rarities and foils look so much better than anything we get in the West. Oh, Shib. Um, yeah? The Exodia that you were looking at? You were looking at a near mint one. The actual listings for that are like 14 bucks. Uh, I, I, I like to have them near mint when I can. They're like... also near mint. Oh. The, what, the, the, what the fuck? Why are there multiple listings for the one... Because the one that the price that they show you at the very top when you click into a card is direct from TCG Player. Oh, ew, God. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I, I hate the way TCG Player works with that sometimes, but it's it's whatever. Okay. God, I'm I'm gonna end up buying some fucking cards tonight. I can feel it. I hate this. The the fact that I'm seeing only Shadal Schism out of all the Shadals get a quarter century is so funny. Because I'm like, really. No, no, no El Shadal Construct? No, no window? Nothing? Just the trap? Yep. Very funny. Meanwhile, this bitch Apollo Usa oh, getting a full quarter century. Fucking Nightmare Unicorn is only like three bucks at a quarter century rare? That's awesome. Oh. You know what else is awesome? Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Uh, yeah, uh, but is, is he as cool as Dark Magician the Knight of Dragon Magic in Quarter Century Rare? Look at how cool this guy is. He is a pretty cool guy. Look at how cool very, this guy looks. He looks it very... Is, it is very nice. He looks very polite. Yeah, he'll knock on your door and then he'll use that spear to kill you. It's fine. <laughs> also, should be, if you, if you want a Quarter Century original or Blue Eyes, I did pull one of them. Oh, I, I, I would pay you for it. I, I don't mind, like, shooting you some cash to send that my way. We'll be in talks. Yeah, uh, literally <laughs> just DM me and remind me to t ask you about Bring that. Bring me in boxes. 
<laughs> don't talk to me about Raymond in boxes. I don't need that shit. <laughs> I, I don't need to return to 2020 uh, in any way, mentally, physically. Okay, Ross Fear Mode uh, Quarter Century is still $8. That's good. <laughs> this is important. All right. Um, yeah, so we've, we've talked enough about the TCG. We should get to talking about the anime, which is the entire point of the podcast. Oh, we've been talking about the TCG I mean, for I guess 20 if minutes. We have to. <laughs> <sighs> Shout outs to Cheese and Mittens. They show up really early in this episode. Yeah. Ugh. So, episode 45 of Yu Gi Oh! Five Days. So, this batch is <clears throat> a lot. Um, I, like, I, I went in knowing that it was six episodes long. Uh, and then the first episode, like, immediately hits me with the threat of we're gonna get really fucked up Carly storylines, and then I, I start screaming. Um, so... All the signers are on their way to go fight the dark signers, you know, try to stop the chaos that is, uh, falling upon the city. They're in the mm -hmm. copter, and Akiza asks to, you know, get the rundown on uh, what the fuck happened all those years ago with the reactor and the mids and the bad and all that shit? Um, and and she's she's given basically the the Spark Notes version of what we've been told across the past like fifteen episodes. Um, and uh, we are we're reminded that Yusei was born in satellite, but and. Or that you say was born in the city, but ended up in satellite because of his parents' work. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Trudge is also here. I'm just Ladies gonna... and gentlemen, Trudge. <laughs> so much of Five Ds is just Trudge is also here. <laughs> it's just sure Trudge. Is. Ladies and gentlemen, Trudge. <laughs> <laughs> Trudge. Uh, so, this, this copter full of important people who have to duel for the fate of uh, the entire city, arguably the world, but for now, mostly just the city, um, goes back to Martha's orphanage in the satellite. Um, they they come out to greet everybody. The kids are uh, happy as hell to see you say. Um, they're kind of happy oh, yeah. to see Jack, arguably. What's up? I just found an image that would have been great to make into an edit for this week if I had had the time. Oh. And the fucking mental faculties, because I could totally just drum Martha here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have. I'm going to put the image on screen for people. This, oh, that's pretty I've good. been seeing this float around. This image is really good. Pretty good. What if I, what if I just tried to, like, fucking slap a PNG of her over the top of this? Oh. That would be really funny. So while when they were on the helicopter, while I'm watching this, I just looked at I looked at Aki and I was like, "Why are your eyes so big?" I literally was tempted to make the emoji edit from uh, last episode again because I'm just gonna put these side by side. Uh, this is the old edit from episode nine. Uh, this uh -huh. this is that fucked up emoji with with the uh -huh. eyes, uh -huh. fucked up eyes. <laughs> I love that emoji. Now, I I want you to look at that and I want you to look at this exact shot of Akiza. These are the same picture. <laughs> yeah, they These are really the same are. picture. Why do they keep drawing her eyes like that? <laughs> like, hello, why are your eyes so big? What are you looking I, at? I mentally was like, I shouldn't do this a second time, but they're making it so easy. <laughs> she's, it's so, it, they're massive. It's, it's fucked up. Like, I can't tell whether she's hyper aware of what's going on or whether she's dissociating so hard. I'm going to have to snap her out hot. of it. Did you know our eyes never like... change size? When we're born. Oh, so there's any size that our whole life. Interesting. That's great. Damn. Yeah, I don't actually know if that's true. That's I hate wow. you. you would I just, fucking despise you. Would just you. Feed our audience <laughs> false information like that? Bio, I want to snap your neck. Are you saying that Mill Mike is an unreliable source for news? <laughs> I mean, you're right about that, but no, damn. Sure. What the fuck do you mean? Oh. Huh. So there's a kid in the orphanage who looks up to Trudge and just goes, holy shit, you're part of security. I want to be a cop when I grow up. And I looked at this child and I went, no, 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 no. 
It's You can't say that, white baby. White baby, you can't become part of the police force. You can't do that. I liked when uh, Martha walked up to Jack and was just like, do your king thing that you do. And he's like, <laughs> king admires a lady and kisses her hand. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Motherfucker starts role doing? playing it out. And Martha's just like, yeah. She's like, yeah. Look at this little cringe bitch. And he's just like, no. Cringe ass nene I'm king. <laughs> not, no, I'm not cringe. Stop it. Uh, um, this is Leo and Luna's first time out of the the tops, uh, going down to satellite, and they're just kind of like, wow, this isn't what we expected. Uh, we didn't expect much, but damn. Damn, there's really nothing here, huh? <laughs> and so what do you guys do for fun? Kick rocks? <laughs> they're like, wow, we really thought that this place was just like cobwebs and kids eating cigarette butts, but it's just it's just like a normal place. Yeah. Somehow it's worse than that, actually. <laughs> Alright, I'm fairly sure this one goes here. So, uh, yeah, Blister's here. He's hanging out. Uh, you know, yeah. he's, he's got some people hanging out with him. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> there they are! Very good. At, very good at it. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. No, it's fair. I like I, the that. fact that you added the shadow in naturally is really good. It's just these, like, there's these two really tiny children behind him that are so terribly drawn. I was like, I'm just gonna yeah. replace some tandem out. No, that's really I wanted good. To, I wanted to make it mittens and cheese, but I just couldn't get it to look right. That's fair. It's I I think this does a lot on its own. I, I think you you've crafted something very good here. Excellent work. Striker, I threw up. <laughs> Jesus. So did I. Uh and we're the throw up brothers. <laughs> we threw up together. <laughs> Try and tell if that's a shiny. Up in my it's, hand. Not. it's not it's not shiny. It would be the same color as the dirt. Um You're up in my hands and I ate it up. So You what? Why did you eat it? We live in the fucking satellite. Why the fuck do you think? So once once everybody Crazy. goes inside, uh, after the kid has expressed a trudge that he really likes security for some fucking reason, um, Martha Gives them the rundown about the weird fog outside. Let me. Just bad a, a thousand here, huh? <laughs> I I need you to know that the first thing I I said to myself when I saw this was I I shouldn't make an edit out of this, and then I immediately started making this edit. Fantastic. <laughs> Expected no less. <laughs> so, since the fog didn't reach all the way out to the orphanage, everybody here is fine. But they have not heard from any of Yusei's friends. All, like, all of them are just gone. Uh, they, they were in the blast radius, so we, we don't know what's happened to any of them. They're dead. Uh, Martha also immediately clocks who Akiza is and, and is like, oh, I'm happy you got better. I'm, I'm very happy that, that we managed to deal with your issues. And, uh, you know, despite... I'm so glad you're not a bitch anymore. Good job. You got better. That's that, that's good, sweetie. Um... Uh, th thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, have a lollipop. I don't... Is that grape? No. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so, so you say still fucked up from his, uh, his duel with, um... With Colin, uh, and his earthbound immortal, uh, Kakapupu. Uh, <laughs> Kakapakapu. Yeah, however the fuck you pronounce it. I, mm. Uh, while, while he's still fucked up from that duel, he's much more confident going into any other duels with the Dark Signers because he's got such a big group of people behind him now. And there's that, like, sense of camaraderie that he has with the other Signers. Uh, so he's he's determined to get his old friend back to fix things and to handle it. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Trudge is going through his simp arc. It's bad. He's going through it so hard. It's real bad. God, he's he's really on it this episode, huh? Yeah. God damn it! I just thought of a really funny edit. 
Um, you know, yeah. you know, you know the the video of Mater from Cars going, "I want you." I want you. Uh, trudge to Mina. Oh. <laughs> and she goes, "What?" Because <laughs> he he has the hots for Jack's assistant, who had the hots for Jack. Uh, whether or not she still has the hots for him, we mm, we're not really me. We're not really. Doesn't mid-aware. matter. Jack doesn't give a shit about that one. Yeah, Jack. Jack is now only into fail girls. Mina's too competent for him. <laughs> I've loved all of one woman in my life. Oh, Jack, not you. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh God. Um, Mina goes to Jack and is like, "Hey, you know, if these people aren't your friends, why the fuck did you come to Satellite?" <laughs> uh, and he doesn't necessarily give her a straight answer. But she figures out real quick that it's because of Carly. He wants to know what the fuck happened to her. Which is fair, considering what did happen to her and what we know about. The things she's enduring. The horrors, if you will. Um, Yeah. Oh, this is bad. Uh, So, full disclosure, I'm just not watching the dub anymore. I've I've cut my viewing to sub only. uh, Because I don't want to put myself through that. Uh, not only double duty, but also just them butchering really good storylines. Um, what do you mean? Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, I was like, you left me all alone. Because I'm I'm reading the wiki summary for 45, and I'm seeing parentheses. In the dub version, Mina confesses to Jack that she might have feelings for him, to which Jack says, of course she does, and finishes saying that they're talking about Carly right now. This, he He's literally so goes, good. this ain't about you. He's so good. That's my goat. <laughs> he gets it. Jesus. Um. Can't let no rotten woman get in the way. Yeah. He he insists that he owes Carly, and he's going to find a way to save her. Which, very based, very good of him. Uh, very epic. Chat, does he know? The answer is no. He does not know. Uh, he will learn, but he does not know currently. He mega doesn't know. So, this is like just a chain reaction of people who are in love with somebody who's uninterested going through it. Because Jack's in love with Carly, who can't do shit with him right now. Uh, Mina's in love with Jack, who has zero interest in her. Trudge is in love with Mina, who's in love with Jack, who has zero interest in him. This is a chain reaction of broken people. (laughs) In the funniest way possible. It's just like, the the literal apocalypse is upon us. Is now the time to be down bad? Could we not? Yes, actually. Okay. (laughs) Okay. You won't have another chance, the apocalypse. What do you mean? Fair point. What do you mean? Fair point. I'll, I'll shut the fuck up then. Uh, no. <laughs> so Martha finds Trudge and gets his ass. She drags his ass inside and makes him cook for the kids. Very funny. Uh, <laughs> because, like, everybody else is welcome here. They're just welcome to hang out and relax and, like, use this as a breather, like, the calm before the storm. And she looks at this cop and goes, no, I'm putting you to work. <laughs> Very based of her. It was awesome. He deserves it. Uh, he he accuses her of of like you know, uh, d- driving a fucking like the awful ship or whatever, and uh, she just goes, "It took your mind off shit, didn't it?" And he goes, "Oh, you're right." It made you stop simping for five minutes, didn't it? <laughs> and he's like, "Whoa, oh yeah, <laughs> it kind of did." Um, uh, she she basically teaches him a lesson about uh staying busy to avoid dealing with your problems uh and and thinking about shit uh and it's just like yeah you shouldn't judge is... bitches from satellite because we go through it every day <laughs> staying busy to avoid your problems is technically bad advice but in this instance it's okay it it is i i wouldn't call it the worst advice there's unhealthier coping mechanisms out there and as a it can get measure, really it's unhealthy if you're if you're avoiding your problems by staying busy with other shit like twenty four seven. Yeah. Uh, hi, I know this because I live this. No, that's fair. I do too. I get it. Uh, <laughs> I'm perfect and don't deal with any issues. Yeah. You play the Yu Gi Oh trading card game. Oh shit! You're right. <laughs> Those Carl, are your issues. When was right the there? last time you were able to read? 
Okay. Second grade. Oh shit. Yeah, that's a true Yu-Gi-Oh player for you right there. No! Remember, everybody, mm. for just pennies a day, you can try to teach Carl to read. Emphasis on try. I thought you were about to go into the Gerber Life grow up plan for a minute <laughs> for some <laughs> fucking reason. <laughs> God, you grew up with those too, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> those fucking advertisements drove me insane, dude. Yeah, I the Gerber baby is burned into my brain against my will. Because with I watched baby? way too much TV as a kid. Uh, what? They're making babies gay now? What? Oh, shit. The funniest <laughs> way you could ever insult a person to just call them the Gerber baby. The wokes <laughs> are making the babies gay. Yeah. You know, you know yep. what else they're making the babies? Cop apologists. Because uh, we get the backstory of the kid who wants to join sector <laughs> security. And, uh, you know. All right. Mar you Martha tells Trudge. That this child lost his dad in a robbery, in the dub he lost his home in a fire, uh, but he, like, admires, he particularly admires the security officers who, like, went in there and tried to save him, even though they failed, and your dad still died. Hey, look, they tried their best. Hmm. Shib, if you look in general, I went ahead and made the Martha edit. Aw. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. All right, that's going on screen. Give me a second, Shara. <laughs> Nobody should expect me to make this into a real social media account. I, I can barely fucking even con- like, I can barely even fucking run one. <laughs> I'm not running another fucking gag account. That's right. how I feel. Go with Rugrats. If you're wondering why the Manjo Mation <laughs> Sanda account hasn't posted in forever, it's because the bit died. Yeah. Understandable. No, not the bit. Uh, rip the bit. We'll miss you. What about uh, atheist Mokubos or whatever it was Nihilist. called? Nihilist. Same thing. Nihilist Mokubo was great. I didn't. I didn't make an account for that. Thank God. Yeah, Nihilist, Nihilist Arby's already great. existed, and I think that one's also. Yeah, inactive. you just steal their tweets. It's free money. <laughs> Jesus. Um. I love stealing other people's property. Okay, so... It was a joke. We didn't need to get that serious about it. Oh, I got scared. I'm just reading through <laughs> a little. for the summary. So, <laughs> while, while they're having the dinner that Trudge cooked, um, Yusei starts telling the kids at the orphanage uh, that, you know, he tells them about how once uh, all the Dark Signers are just taken out, uh, he's going to make make the bridge, finally, that connects Satellite to New Domino. Everyone's sitting around, smiling, laughing, having a great time, then Yusei gets real serious and goes, we're gonna build the bridge, you know? <laughs> and everyone's like, huh? <laughs> He's like, Dude, read the room, you say. Everyone's trying to have a good time. Well, it's fine, because kids like bridges or some shit. Kids Wait, love I... bridges! Yeah. I can't believe this, but just checking my Twitter gave me another good bit, so I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a fucking work oh. on this one. This one's really dumb. Oh, hell yeah. Anyway, kids love bridges. Kids, kids love bridges. Do yeah. love bridges. We don't love Jeff Bridges. We don't love deep AI fucking Jeff Bridges going, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm just going to yeah. play this. There you go. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't oh, know yeah. what that sounds like, real take from Tron Legacy. Very good. Yeah. Excellent shit. Yeah. 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 That movie is so. <laughs> bad i love it but it's so bad it's it's my favorite tron movie it's such a bad movie <laughs> like i love it as just daft punk the movie yeah daft punk soundtrack aesthetics good you got michael sheen being a weirdo in a movie which is always fun uh but the plot of that movie fucking it's kind of shit <laughs> yeah 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 as much as i love tron not great Tr tron's always been like aesthetics first plot second <laughs> as a set of movies i love the original tron i can admit that it's kind of a boring slog but it's awesome i've seen I it once don't it, remember what happened it is a boring <laughs> slog but it's a charming boring slog I that was like really the, expensive uh, the light bike the light bike that came out out of it was awesome yeah the, the, the light cycles rips. are so good it's the thing that everyone remembers about it because it's the best thing i'm stunned They're we so haven't cool. i'm bringing it back to Yu-Gi-Oh. i'm stunned we haven't gotten like a tron archetype of like 
digital warriors. That feels like a thing that could uh, IP easily... Mascarena. Is she Tron? Kinda, yeah. Have you seen the alt art of her on a bike? I have not seen the alt art of her on a bike. Hold on. Look up IP Mascarena alt art. Because it is just like Tron aesthetic, basically. No? Yeah, that's a light cycle. Okay. Fair point. Yeah, it's it's real sick. Understandable. I, I was gonna say Vrains felt like the time to do like a Tron archetype, but uh yeah, okay. So, you know, while while um uh everybody's having dinner talking about uh equality and all that shit, eliminating uh <laughs> eliminating classism, uh lightning strikes and the glass window behind everybody just completely shatters. And some dude shows up at the orphanage. He's just fucking there, like, <laughs> bro is, who wants to gamble? Bro is like, just standing there, menacingly. <laughs> like, bro, fuck off. Who cares uh, about he, you? He flashes his uh, dark sign or tat. Uh, it's, a, it's a spider. And uh, the spider is the one that you say saw in the vision destroying satellite. So, uh, it's a little fucked up. And this guy immediately just wants to start dueling with all of these innocents nearby who are in immediate danger of having their souls sacrificed for a giant fucking dude. <laughs> yeah, this guy sucks. I don't like him. Uh, now, you know, with the consequences of what happens when you're near, uh, one of, one of these duels, um... Now, knowing all that, Jack should not, uh, <laughs> Jack should not immediately go, fuck you, fight me, uh, in front of a bunch of kids near an orphanage. Uh, but Yusei has to stop him and go, man, are you stupid? <laughs> Literally everyone will die. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Let me at him. Yeah, but I hate him. What if I want to kill him? Hear me out. Counter argument. Fuck this guy. <laughs> uh, you, you say basically stops him and goes, I will handle it. And he, he goes to get his dual disc. And Akiza is like, I'm coming with you. You are not fighting him solo. Which is probably good, considering you say self-admitted to still being traumatized from the Kiryu duel. No, stop, Jack. That's enough. Don't do it. Seriously. <laughs> Click the track and fall clip. Uh, Jack is placed in charge of uh, getting all of the kids to safety and getting them the fuck out of here. And, uh, you know, there's... There's three kids in particular. Uh, the one who's a fan of security for some reason, uh, and two others whose names are apparently just John and Mitch. Yeah, it's Inky, Stinky, Blinky, and Clyde. Where's Clyde? Uh, that's, the, that's the one that almost uh, fell off a building. <laughs> Where is Clyde? <laughs> no, I haven't seen Clyde in like 30 episodes. This is a genuine question. I Where think is Clyde he? died. Oh, fuck. Was he the in the fog? Clyde? Oh, no. Oh god, Clyde. Wait, is this a bit? Who's Clyde? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. I'm getting concerned. This is a bit. <laughs> oh! Uh, yeah, so... Tell us, where's Clyde? Dipshit and fuck, uh, the three children, are, are like, discussing about how the Dark Signers are the guys that got Crow. Uh, and, what do you and mean they got him? Exactly. And so they're like, oh, we're gonna get him. We're gonna get his ass. We're gonna get revenge for our guy, Crow Hogan. Um, domino effect. Please be excited for the domino effect of this later. It's gonna be great. And totally not make me so cry upsetting. watching the fucking episodes. Uh, so, you say uh, insist on taking the duel somewhere else. Uh, like, into the city proper. Far away from where any civilians probably still remain. And, uh, you know, Akiza's within the barrier of the flames as moral support. Uh, and, and the spider glyph, uh, appears on the floor. Time to fucking duel. And ev all the other signers know, because anytime one of them enters a shadow duel, their tattoos glow, which is just, like, you know, but basically just putting out the bad signal that shit's going down somewhere. Very convenient. Which is, like, why? You can't help. Well, I mean, they might be able to, as we'll see in a bit. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps it's good to know when uh, one of the other three people you're connected to through weird magical tattoos is in the middle of a really rough duel against a guy. 
That's fair. Yeah. So what if they didn't? Huh? What? What if they didn't? What if they didn't what? Know that they were doing the duel. Uh, shit might be fucked then. Damn, you're right. Yeah. Do you want shit to be fucked? I yeah, can, a little bit. Please move on. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the the duel starts, and uh, you know, you say summons a guy in defense mode ends turn. This motherfucker's rude. <laughs> You, you say some, summons a guy in defense mode, ends his turn immediately, and it's like, damn, you bricked, huh? That's rough, buddy. Uh, anyway, I'm built different. And his opponent immediately makes me say out loud, damn, I feel bad for people with arachnophobia on this one. Because uh, it's, it's all spiders. Which, like, you expect, given the tattoo. But these are some of the grossest spider designs I've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like... Uh, spider web, spider cocoon, dark spider, which, which, uh, I can't get a full image of this, can I? That's great. Probably not, but it's sick. I love these nasty ass spiders. Of course you do. Okay, yeah, underground arachnid is the one I was thinking of. Underground arachnid is fucking disgusting. I hate how it looks. Ugh. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, I believe, uh, let me look at my notes here about Underground Arachnid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, that's about me shouting about the children. Uh, also fair. What the fuck is that? Ew, uh -huh. ew, 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 wood. Ew, 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 ew. Spider <laughs> gooch? Which one would you would? I don't think we need clarification on yeah, that. Yeah, so I was very upset that these children <laughs> showed up at this dual spot. Yeah, dipshit and fuck. <coughs> back at it again. Thinking that they have any chance of finding Crow by beating this guy who they can't duel, who they can't beat. Uh, who's going to bring about the end of humanity, potentially. But, um, yeah, so Yusei's opponent, Mr. Spiders... Uh, just Dark Synchro's turn one immediately. Mr. Fighters. Uh, he also Jeremy gets Yusei Spiders. down to 1,600 in a single turn. And, uh, you know, Yusei's not doing too good. Y Yusei's kind of going through it on this one. It's not the ideal circumstance at all. Yeah. Uh, but it's okay because on his next turn, he immediately gets my Umfi Quobolt Hedgehog on the field. Love that guy. Shoutouts. Shoutouts. Uh, he's able to synchro relatively quick in a road warrior. Uh, and he, he, you know, tries tries to get an attack off, but um, doesn't really work out. He ends up destroying Yusei's other guy who was in defense mode still, and forces uh, road fighter in defense mode. And uh, so... You know, um, that just happened. As the duel is going on, Akiza spots Dip and Shit, two of the three kids, who are, like, running up towards the flaming uh, spider glyph, like, in engulfing the road in purple flame. Uh, because these children have no sense of survival instincts. Despite growing up in the satellite, they have, like... No capacity for danger, seemingly. Yeah. That tracks. <laughs> you know they're fucking stupid. And Aki Akiza and Yusei Whoa. both go, "Oh sweet Jesus! If this guy summons an Earthbound Immortal, these children are dead." Meanwhile, the guy who could summon an Earthbound Immortal activates a field spell that lets him get one on the field faster, and that's the cliffhanger for forty-five. It's so funny. <laughs> it's like. Man, it sure would be bad if somebody summoned an Earthbound Immortal and sacrificed these kids' souls. Hard cut to, uh, I activate my altar, where if I get four flames, I get to special summon an Earthbound Immortal for free! And they're like, oh, wait, what? Yeah. No? And he's like, too bad. Two more turns. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this, this guy, this, uh, spider dark signer is 
I I clocked his voice immediately as being familiar to me. Uh huh. And I was like, huh. I wonder who he's voiced. Maybe it's somebody like in a Sentai or something. Which, to be fair, he has voiced a lot of monsters in Sentai, just one-off guys. Um, yeah. He also voiced a Fangire in Kiva, which was uh, funny. But the main reason I know him is he's the Japanese voice of Akuma from Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, anytime I heard this man talk, I was just like, yeah, this tracks. This this all tracks. And I, I debated making like a Satsui no Hato edit, but... There was nothing cooking in my brain on how to make that work or look good, so I just I just refrained. But there's that knowledge for you. Uh, any anytime you're watching this in sub, that's Akuma baby. <laughs> that's Akuma baby. Uh, all right, episode forty six. Uh, my first note, all caps. Oh, these kids are gonna fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's just about my first note also was, uh, well, uh, seeing Guru doesn't fill me with much hope for people living. Yeah, so uh, I, I I was watching these in a call with some people, and uh, th one of them is like a very big fan of GX. He, he's been kind of like telling me how it's his favorite Yu-Gi-Oh series, and uh, he, he was getting my live reactions to this shit, and he was just laughing. He was just giggling at my misfortune, because uh, these episodes put me through the horrors. Oh, yeah. We're gonna get to the horrors. <laughs> like, this is nothing by comparison. So, we open. Trudge and Martha are looking for these three idiot children. They are, like, scrambling to find these kids before something bad happens to them. Uh, Dip and Shit, as we've established, are right in the blast radius of uh, Soul Sacrifice if an Earthbound Immortal gets summoned. But fuck. The third kid, the one who admired sector security, is alone in an abandoned building, very high up above the, the like, area where they're dueling. Surely this can only go well. It's not like sure. we've had things with people in tall buildings and dying uh, yeah. in this arc multiple times. It's not, not like this is a pattern. That's that never happened. Like... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... We're on the clock, uh, because the moment four of these lanterns light up, there's an Earthbound Immortal on the field, and these children are as good as dead. Uh -huh. um, and so Bro does not hesitate. He just starts going at it. He starts trying to combo, trying to get shit to work, because uh, for, every, for every monster in defense position, I, I think at the start of his turn, he gets to light one of the lanterns, and with, with four, he's able to just do that shit. And you better believe that he gets that shit in, like, two seconds! Yeah, no, he gets a lantern lit up pretty quickly, and Yusei is struggling to, like, get the defense position monster that was forced into that by card effects off of the field, try trying to, like, summon anything else so he can do anything else. But, uh... You know. Uh, <laughs> he, he may be getting counterplayed. He, he may be, uh... <laughs> is not in the best position. He's only getting this. a little owned. It's fine. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Um, What's that uh, tweet about? Like, I'm not getting owned as I... As I Does it morph into a corn dog? Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Does it um, shrink to the size of a corn dog? I'm not owned! So, the most insulting thing that you can do is uh compliment your opponent right before you bm them and like basically uh just ruin their life which is exactly yeah. what this guy does he's like damn that was pretty impressive you stopping me from summoning the uh immortal this turn unfortunately for you <laughs> i'm built different and then he just starts going crazy with combos um and he activates uh a card that uh just lights up the rest of the lanterns anyway on his turn. For half his life points. He just gets to do that. Yeah, of course. And, um... You know, the shrine explodes. And, uh, the Earthbound Immortal is being summoned. These children's souls start to leave their fucking bodies. And, uh, everyone is horrified. These kids are gonna die. Suddenly, Jack Atlas... <laughs> 
Jack the king, Atlas the king. on his fucking dual runner runs <laughs> up and he he just goes and says, and I quote, I never let down my young fans. And like <laughs> drives into the flames that are only safe well, for signers to cross, covers the kids, like physically covers these kids, and like latches their souls back into their bodies with the power of his magic tattoo. It's sick as hell. <laughs> it's very good. Excellent work, Jack. Jack is a fucking legend. Oh, I also uh, glossed over it, but um, I want to mention special shout-outs. And by shout-outs, I mean hate to Turret Warrior. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm I'm> <laughs> <that. laughs> by shout-outs, I mean slander. Um, Turret Warrior? I heard, I heard that name and I went, oh, this is going to be good. He's going to be like multiple Gatling guns. He's going to be like a guy on every like shoulder. And then he's just like the turrets of a castle with a couple of like little turrets on the top <laughs> of his shoulders. Maybe the most underwhelming design I've seen on a Yu-Gi-Oh card in ages. Especially from like an anime card. I, it's It's just boring. Yeah, he's not great. He's not Yeah, I I'm not I'm not a fan. Um like this is the same show that gave us fucking Barrel Dragon. Where's the sauce, bro? <laughs> to be fair, it didn't give us Barrel Dragon yet. No, we Barrel Dragon was DM. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah, Barrel. I'm thinking of Borload. I'm thinking of those fuckers. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, Bor Borload is much later. I get that. <sighs> yeah. Uh just Spoiler, least favorite card for me is Turret Warrior. <laughs> I'm just dropping that right now. Fucking spoilers, holy shit. I gave people a warning. Now, there's one thing I want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, uh, why didn't Aki run over and just do the shield thing to these kids? Uh, she was inside of the flames with Yusei. Once you enter the flames, you cannot exit until the duel is done. I thought the kids were also in the flames, weren't they? The the kids were, like, very close by. It's weird, because the, the way they painted it, like, in the show, it's like, there's an in-between layer, and then there's the inside. So the kids were in, like, the in-between layer or something, where they couldn't leave? I don't know if that's true, but I don't know I, enough about this shit to, to, to quarrel with you about visually, this Visually, that's, that's how it came across. It just seems silly to me. There's the inner circle of flames and then the geoglyph flames. Okay, yeah. So, like, there's two sets of um, magic fire. There's the magic fire from the actual, like, spider glyph, and then there's the magic fire from the dual arena, which is just a big circle. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that tracks. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so this guy just manages to get uh, his big fuck off spider onto the field um which you know not as horrifying a design as i expected most of the earthbound immortals have been relatively tame with how they look it's just like some some symbols on a mostly black body that's pretty basic for the animal it is yeah um and uh ev everybody <laughs> ba basically every important major character is like watching this from some of the rooftops <coughs> and seeing this big fuck off spider just appear much much to their horror big fucking spider god i hate spiders yeah this Should this one have? had to have been rough for you man what's up the edit i'm working on mm -hmm. this, this might be my best one i think oh Okay. The flames, the flames that keep showing up, they were like a kind of bluish purple tone, right? Well, like the flames of the actual dual like the, arena? Like whenever, whenever the, the fucking dark signer uh, flames show up. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I'm adding like one last little fucking bit to this. Cause I yeah, they were like, make it like, they were like indigo-ish or something. Yeah, okay, they were perfect. more on the purple side to my memory, but purple. like, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It'll be fun. This'll work. Uh. <laughs> this will be an edit for later, but you're gonna fucking love this shit, dude. I'm I'm excited. <laughs> Just gonna add a little bit of a fucking glow effect there. We're gonna save this as a PNG real quick, and I'll send it to you. Okay. 
Excellent. But yeah, um, I gotta say, as somebody who's arachnophobic, I actually kind of dig the fucking Earthbound Spider monster. It's kind of neat looking. Yeah. I I briefly thought about making that the thing I redrew as Mudang, but I couldn't make it work. That's fair. I I think my thing with, like, why the Earthbound Immortal Spider works and why um the, the gross one that's, like, half the body of a woman on a spider doesn't is that one of them is going for something very basic and it doesn't have, like, a lot of the features that make spiders, uh, like, just gross to look at and think about. Where, like, it, it's it's not like it's hairy, it's not like it has, like, teeth or the big bug eyes. Yeah, they, it's just the they shape. simplify it to a perfect amount. Yeah. It, it's still intimidating it and it's still spirit. recognizable. Uh, okay, Shib, I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM this to you. Okay. I will let you decide when to fucking put it up. Okay. Just as soon as I can find it in my fucking... I, one of the things I hate about doing art on a tablet is trying to find where my fucking files are. Yeah, I get that. such a pain in the ass. Damn it, where are you? You are just a file called Monkey PNG. <laughs> <laughs> that bodes very well for how this is going to look. I'm excited. Honestly, it, ins it immediately inspires a new edit, so that's great. Ooh! My, my brain is starting to work again. Uh, there we go. I DM'd it to you. <laughs> there you. <gasps> that sounds promising. Yeah, you're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fucking ready. Um, all right. Uh, that's that's phenomenal. Holy shit. Um, I'll I I will flash it on the screen during the relevant set of episodes. <laughs> so, um, the the guy who just summoned the big spider starts laughing and starts name dropping the stuff we know, like the NRD reactor. Um, he starts name dropping that he knew Yusei's father, and Yusei's like, "How do you know this shit, man?" Which is a very fair question. And then the guy just, um, you know, drops that he's Goodwin's brother. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting this right yeah. away. Uh-huh. Uh, when when I looked up his VA, I immediately got spoiled on the fact that uh, his name was uh, Roman Goodwin. And I was like, man, oh, don't I... Worry. <laughs> yeah? That was the same for me uh, when I was like, who, what are the Earthbound Immortals? I want to I wanna know, where, oh. who, who uses Raska? I, yeah. I like Raska. That's my favorite one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and there's was, a bunch of spoilers here. I was very worried this was going to be the secret that they kept to the end of the arc. And instead, they just told me an episode later. Thank God. Because I hate spoiling myself on stuff just because I'm like, your voice sounds familiar. Who voices you? And then you just get massive fucking spoilers in the Google search. I always hate when that happens. Happens every time. Uh-huh. Uh, he gives you say some more backstory about like the big incident that created the satellite, how the reactor fucked up. Um and you say asks him flat out, did you intentionally fuck it up? And he just laughs in you say's face and says, Who knows? You do, motherfucker. <laughs> you know. He's a bit of a douchebag. Uh a bit? No, yeah. he's he's a massive douchebag. <gasps> so, uh, he immediately goes to attack with his big spider, and Yusei is able to activate a trap, save his life, but, uh, you know, uh, there's an immortal on the field, so, uh, haha, <laughs> we're in danger. And because there's a giant earthbound immortal moving around and attacking, the, uh, you know, the buildings in the area... Not exactly stable. Not exactly safe to be in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Trudge and Martha, who are, are looking for the the kid who likes um who likes sector security, um, they they go up to the roof because the kid's on the roof specifically. Um, and uh, as they they get up there and they like shout out to the kid, the building starts to fall forward. And so, um, 
you know, it's it's a slope that's like dangerous to try and descend, but it's not it's not the worst yet. Uh, so Martha immediately starts, like, trying to make her way slowly towards the kid to stop him from falling off. Um, and, and the kid is, like, crying, he's apologizing for what he did, and, uh, Martha just tries to reassure him and just go, hey, if you want to join security, you gotta be brave, you can't, you can't be a crybaby all the time. Uh, Trudge tries to do his best to help, and he's able to grab the kid, but Martha starts falling. Uh, she, she tries her best to get back up. She cannot. She keeps sliding further down as the building keeps falling. Uh, and she has a moment where she realizes she's not gonna fucking make it. Oh, Seven's in the chat for Martha. She realizes that she's doomed, but that doesn't mean that everybody else has to be. So she kind of just, like, gives Trudge a nod, accepts what's about to happen to her, and, uh, tells him to take care of the kid. Uh, Trudge has a moment of clarity and he's like, no, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm not a good guy. I'm not a hero. I talk shit about people from the satellite all the time. I'm, I, I suck. Um, and you say and Jack see what's going on from the ground and they start shouting. Because Martha's a good friend of theirs. She, she helped take care of them. Uh, and she, uh, she starts shouting her goodbyes and is uh, just telling them about how, like, you know, she's sure that Yusei is going to be the one to build the bridge between the cities. Um, and, you know, with those words, she falls off, falls off the building. And before she can even hit the ground, because she has entered the, the glyph, a thing that normal people cannot do once the duel has started, uh... Her soul just gets sucked into the Earthbound Immortal. There's no body left. She's just gone. Yup. Just fucking snatched her from the sky and... Yep. He's like, no, Martha! And Martha! Uh, Tr Trudge, from where he's at, starts screaming that Yusei needs to hurry up and win. And uh, <laughs> Roman is just laughing at everyone's misery. Yeah, he's a sack of shit, and I hope he dies. I also hope he dies. I hope you say kills him with rocks. <laughs> Fuck More the duel. Blood. Just hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. That's all we need. The whole time I'm like, go save her, you fucking moron. You could just fucking... <laughs> you could go down there and grab her and pull her up. Doesn't. Uh, yeah, so you say immediately begins his turn and uh, summons Stardust Dragon. He is done fucking around. He's, he's done playing games. I immediately after that, I just wrote... Well, kids, remember for the rest of your lives that it's your fault she's dead. Yeah. Yeah, that guilt's gonna live with them forever. Uh, Good. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Earthbound Immortal, the oh, big I'm spider. Sorry. Does the psychiatrist have an issue with me saying these children should have a deep and personal trauma for the rest of their lives? Oh, Ooh, no. cry me a river. <laughs> Jesus. I see that the, the deep emotional trauma that you have is making you lash out at people. Can I least. talk about my deep emotional trauma that this episode gave me, please? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, the big, the big spider has an effect where it cannot be the target of an attack. What if he was a little spider? Um, then he wouldn't be an earthbound immortal. He would just be an oh, earthbound shit. little guy. You're right. So he can't... Uh, Stardust Dragon can't attack the big spider. But he can attack directly, I guess, instead? Something like that. I, I don't fucking know. Is it, well, sure. I can't target you for an attack, but that doesn't mean that there isn't an attack target. Mm -hmm. So I can just hit you. And it's like, I mean, I, I guess it's, that is like a ruling. It's weird. I'm going to allow it because it's it makes for a good moment. But oh, I, I, I'm glad that you'll allow it. I like raised an eyebrow at it. I was like, hmm, this doesn't <laughs> sound right. <laughs> Because by this point, we know the rules of the card game. We know how this is supposed to go. Uh, this is Duelist I, Kingdom. I wouldn't speak for everybody. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Uh, and, um, you know, Yusei's about to get a direct attack off with his big uh, his big ace monster, his cool Stardust Dragon. And Roman out. goes, okay, but what if I had three eggs? What if those three eggs became three little spider tokens? And I took zero damage. And then I got mad. 
Because <laughs> this motherfucker has the out for everything, it feels like. It fucking sucks. He's that um, one friend that's just like, uh, when you're like role playing or like playing D&D &D or something, they're like, oh, nope, well, uh, the, this yeah. magic thing just came out of nowhere. I'm safe. Yeah. That, that magic attack didn't hurt me because uh, I, I threw out a fireball at the last second. You're like, yep. okay, whatever. Yeah, it's a. Uh... Timmy. It, it <laughs> we're never playing again together because it's fucking annoying, Timmy. <laughs> I see your deep personal trauma from uh, playing D&D <laughs> once with a guy is uh, yeah. finally starting to make its way out there. Happy for yeah. you. Uh, I forgot to bring up this edit when the Earthbound Immortal got summoned. Uh, special shout out to KZ who sent this my way, and I, I out loud just went, "Holy shit!" Um, in case you can't tell, he's gonna what do the it to him. Here. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in. No, nope, hold on. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna enhance. You know he had to do it to him. <laughs> Isn't it? I need to know. Is that titled "Gotta Uru It To Him"? No, it's not. God, that's good. Oh yeah. Uh, hey Shibuya. Mm-hmm. I just have a quick question for you about this edit. Uh-huh. What's your opinion of Master Ugwe? <laughs> like, Kung Fu Panda? Kung Fu Panda Master Ugwe? <laughs> Smiles. I like him. He's a funny turtle. I... What? I'm pretty sure mm. chat's gonna figure out what I'm doing based on that alone. <laughs> oh my Christ. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> while, while you're cooking that, let me just continue. Uh, you say it's fucking pissed. This could become an emote. I hate this. Oh, God. We um, just had, like, an aim notification. What the fuck was that? It's funny. Uh, that was crazy. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's my, that's my text notification. Uh, that okay. is from Dot Hack. All right, I was like, "What? Who the fuck turned the on a nineteen eighties computer? What the fuck?" <laughs> oh, it's the it's it's the fucking mail notification that you get from the Dot Hack games. One second, Hell let yeah. me like fucking. Uh, what's awesome first... about uh, what's also about Yusei's turn here mm -hmm. is how he uh doesn't actually get to do an attack at this guy. Yeah. And then the dude, and he's just like, all right, well, uh, get fucked, idiot. And you say, he's like, all right, well, I, I guess I end my turn. I have this literally all I have. That's all I can do. Yeah. Like, cool, you say. I'm, I'm glad that you're doing your best. Doesn't really feel like it, but I mean. Yeah, he's, he's trying. He's not succeeding, he but he is trying. Is uh, he though? Yeah, so. While while Yusei's turn is uh, going really badly, Trudge manages to get the kid. Uh, they get through the doorway, and they're making their way to safety, so they're fine. Uh, Martha's sacrifice was not in vain. Everybody else on that roof got out of there. We're good. Um, and, you know, we cut back to the duel, and everything is going fine. Um, you know, as fine as it can be after uh, Yusei and Jack watch uh, the woman who raised them, uh, you know, turn to just nothing. Uh, and suddenly rallies here. <laughs> Spider guy replaced himself with this child. Yeah, that that took me by some fucking surprise, I, dude. I, yeah, them name dropping all of Yusei's friends who got lost in the fog is a lot. I didn't expect it to have the payoff of uh, rallies dueling you now. Also, so <laughs> did did Goodwin at one point refer to rally as a he? Yeah, rallies yeah. rallies a guy. I I never fucking knew that. Yeah, <laughs> I've always thought Rally was a girl. Yeah, as a kid I also thought Rally was a girl, but then watching this, it's mentioned that he's like a young boy, so uh, you know. The design doesn't really clearly convey that, but I guess haircuts no, are hard to come not. by in satellite. <laughs> uh you have you have a female sounding voice actress. Yep. You have <laughs> Yeah, well, no, nothing nothing tells me this is a guy. It's very funny. V VAs for young boys tend to just be women, so I get the confusion on that. Yeah, no, I, I know that. It's just always funny when, like, something like that takes you by surprise. Because it's not, it's not explicitly said a lot or anything. It, it, they mention it a couple times, but it's very easy to miss. Yeah. Um, okay. So, Rally has, has the, the spider, signer mark, has the dual disc, um, and the motherfucker... Uh, that he was dueling is like uh, perched somewhere up high uh, on on top of the web from one of his cards 
or something. And uh, starts laughing in Yusei's face about uh, how he's going to fail to save another friend. Um, uh, y- Yusei screams to stop, uh, you know, controlling Rally like this. And, uh, Not you know. controlling my friends. It's a little, like, rat thing. Yeah. The rat meme. Uh, and up. Roman starts laughing in his stop face. Fighting! Because... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been a good edit. <laughs> that would have been good, yeah. Uh, and, and Roman Roman laughs in Yusei's face and says, you know, I'm not controlling him. If he wants to win, he'll win. If he wants to lose, he'll lose. But you can't surrender this duel. Somebody and then has Raleigh to be just shit. sort of, uh... And, Rally just goes, well, Yusei? I lived a good life. Yeah, Rally looks at Yusei dead on and just says, the world needs you. You cannot lose here. And takes himself out he actively he he kills himself is what he does oh, in the card game. In chat for rally yeah took the bit uh, too far two people dying in one episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! what the fuck <laughs> it's it's fucked. so fucked i was genuinely like wait no what yeah what? i <gasps> we already lost somebody. I thought Rally was gonna like fall into a coma, and the only way to wake him up was gonna be to uh, to beat the Dark Signers once and for all. But no, they oh, killed dead. him. He turned to ash. There is no body. Yeah, no, that was that was extra fucked. We haven't seen a character turn to fucking ashes before. There's That's not no... true. There was all those people <laughs> a couple episodes ago in the Black Mist. We haven't seen someone we care about turn to ash. There you go. Okay. Um, all fair. Yeah. It's, it, you say like his face breaks he snaps he like tries to catch rally as he's falling to the ground and there's nothing there's nothing left you sound like you're about to cry i was crying at these episodes thank you for noticing um oh, okay it's a lot it's like Five Ds has been getting very serious, and it's been very good. And I know we already watched Carly die and come back, and the implication is that every Dark Signer has had to die to to come back fucked up and evil. But seeing child murder, <laughs> yeah, it's you a lot. Do it. Every, oh, every time we joked about killing a child uh, on original Duel Monsters run, <laughs> they were fucking setting us up for this. Yeah, uh, t- <laughs> we were not ready for what was coming in in our future. It's fucked. <laughs> we. <laughs> we? We? Mini? Nintendo? Nintendo? Oh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the Dark Signers have a little meeting after... Yeah, they all the... show up there and they're like, have we... meet us at the Shrine of the Silver Monkey! Ugh. Shut up, you weirdos. Me? I think 5Ds yeah. would be a lot I'm better. I'm yawning, I'm sorry. I wasn't even talking to you at all. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome, Bio. <laughs> I think 5Ds would be a lot better if it was just Legends <laughs> of the Hidden Temple. Me too! <laughs> God, now I just want to watch Legends of the Hidden Temple. Is that that Nickelodeon show? Yes. The was like, uh, with the giant ever, stone bio. face. It's great. What? I said, I'm glad he was present as ever. No, was he was a- he was genuinely asking a question. I know, I know. <laughs> thing would have- Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, moving on to episode 47. Yeah, uh, I, can I tell you? Uh-huh. At the end of no. 46. No. Mm-hmm. Shut up. When I... Sh- <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I was sitting there waiting for the moment where Jack sees Carly, and then it happens at the start of 47, and I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, 40, 47 opens and threatens to hurt me worse, which I didn't think was possible at this point, because they they have a little confrontation. They They have a couple of lines of dialogue back and forth before she disappears. Jack thought that she was a dark signer? What do you mean he had his suspicions? When when he's like talking to her and she's like, you're gonna have to find out Jack my love, I was like, this this is yeah. love. This is very yeah. painful. She she literally calls him my love because now that she's died and had the time to reflect, she realized her feelings and what if I screamed and cried and threw up? What if I screamed and cried and threw up, hypothetically, you know? 
Uh, you should, right why, now. Why is 5Ds doing this? Why Why is this actually the best season of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> uh, um, also, one of the Dark Signers uh, holds up Ancient Fairy Dragon, the card that Luna has been searching for. Her, um, her can assign dragon. And, uh, he's like, yeah, you want it? Fight me. Fuck you. Let me say this to start. I stole your dragon, and I'm strong. Yeah. <laughs> Meet me at Monkey Pole. What? <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, his name is Divac. And he's not a little bitch. He's not going to hide. He's just like, you You want the dragon? We're going to meet up here, and you're going to duel me. And the dragon is at stake. That's it. Like, clear, concise, knows what he's about, not using trickery like some other bitches on the Dark Signer team. So, that's, you know, that's at least slightly respectable, even if I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> yeah. They all get back to uh, their their little headquarters, and all the kids are crying because Martha's fucking dead. Yeah, everybody who survived that last duel has to go back and tell the kids about how Martha died. <laughs> not to mention, and the you fact can thank that... these three right here for it. Yeah, not to mention the fact that you say also has to deal with the fact that he's lost two important people in his life today. <laughs> so this is a lot. This is a lot to deal with. He'll get over it. Uh, as if he wasn't already traumatized enough from dueling Earthbound Immortals and Dark Signers. We're just we're just stacking it. We're playing a game of fucking uh, Jenga with this man's emotions. When is he going to break? I don't know, but it's inevitable. You can't put a man through so much in a single arc. It's going to be fucked. Um... It was really sad. Uh, yeah, so, um, while, while the kids are crying about how, like, they're the reason that, uh, that Martha died, Jack, uh, gets tired of it, slams his fist on the table, uh, and tells them to stop crying because it's not their fault. Uh, because, and I'm like, you know, man, I could never be a hero because I would immediately be like, you killed her and her blood's on your hands! <laughs> 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 um... <laughs> But yeah, oh uh, Jack is like, shut the fuck up. It's not on you. And then Yusei goes, he's right. The Dark Signers did this. Uh, they, they did this to Martha. They did this to Rally and Blitz and Tank and Nervin. You know, all beloved characters that I give a shit about, clearly. Um, and, you know, he reiterates, we gotta, we gotta beat the Dark Signers. We gotta kill them. He doesn't say the word kill, but we gotta kill them. <laughs> we gotta kill these <laughs> we people. We gotta kill them again. We gotta make sure they stay dead this time. <laughs> Looks like we're gonna have to kill these guys, you say. <laughs> Good. <thinking> hey, <laughs> hey. This image is called postchildmurder.jpg. Let me at him. I was I was waiting for you say after he like screamed Rally's name to run up and try to throw hands. Like actually just try to punch the guy in the face. And then he didn't do it, and I was so disappointed. He did it kind of after when he ran over like, come on, fight me. Like yeah. he was a fucking tr little frat bro. Just like, come on, bro. Come on. Ripping his shirt off. Come on. Come fucking fight me. Yeah. But like, you say has not hesitated to throw hands before. I, I just was waiting for him to like actively try to drop kick this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's like my favorite, one of my favorite tropes in like anime when the good guy like finally loses his shit. Yeah, I, I, love, I love when a guy just snaps <laughs> and you're like, you see the villains actively go, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I love that and I love friends really, to enemies. I feel like the first time I remember it happening was in Sonic X. If, if you guys have watched that, <laughs> it's in one Sonic part where Sonic. <laughs> yeah, he like goes into like dark Sonic or something. It's like for like 10 seconds, but I was oh. just, as a kid, like, holy shit. Yeah, I don't remember a lot of Sonic X. I just like caught episodes here and there. I think his friend, like Sora, like Chris or something. Yeah, Chris. Um, gets hurt by Eggman, and Sonic's like, "I'm gonna fuck you up." <laughs> Four kids. Sonic looks at Eggman and goes, "I'm gonna fucking rip your eyeballs out." I think Jason Griffith could have really delivered that okay. line impeccably. Yeah. Shibuya, I've sent you the second one. 
Oh no, a second. You're not ready for the mid episode <laughs> edit. The second edit has hit the uh, DMs. <laughs> Holy shit, man. <laughs> I'm glad I got these in in time. Oh, good. My file explorer has decided to uh, act like it's about to crash. Let's go. Oh, no. I love when it does this every single time. Uh, hopefully it's not because the file name broke anything. Uh, well, there's there's a few periods at the end of the name, so... Yeah, that's, that's my that. only concern with that. Um, but it, it seems to have saved just fine, so we should be good. Okay, good. Uh, okay. So... We have some pretty clear-cut rivalries with the signers and the dark signers. We have very clearly, like, these are the telegraphed duels that are going to happen, where it's like, Yusei versus Colin. Uh, we have Jack and Carly. We have Akiza, and we have... Um, Misty. Misty, yeah. Uh, for some reason, Missy was uh, the name I was thinking of. <laughs> um, the reason is Doctor Who, that's why. Um, and then we yeah. have uh, Dipshit Twins versus Mr. Monkey. The only one that doesn't have actual stakes, like, emotionally, outside of uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon being kidnapped. That's the only reason. But it's fine, because we're getting that one out of the way first. Uh, we're, we're, fo we're following as uh, all of the signers go their separate ways to confront their individual dark signer rivals. And, uh, you know, Trudge is chaperoning the kids and driving them as he I'll should drive the kids in. yeah uh but while he's does he while he does this he also relentlessly makes fun of them uh you know because he's still an asshole so um, it's nice uh, to see that hasn't changed want me to drop this in here this wonderful picture of his big dumb face yeah uh th this episode like the way it was animated and, like, some of the visual gags, it felt like it wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh. This felt like it was, like, a different show entirely for a bit. Kinda, yeah. I don't know how okay. else to describe it, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. The, the budget for these episodes goes wildly from, like, the good side of things to the bad side of things. Yeah. A lot of characters I kept noticing were really badly off-model. Well, yeah, if you're gonna waste money on, like, Sakuga... You save it for the big duels, like Carly and Jack, and uh, you saying Colin. So I can forgive it. I can absolutely forgive it for being a little bit jank here. Um, I can't. Yeah, we know. That's great, man. What the um, hell? They were not <laughs> so Leo and Luna are in the back seat, talking about um, all all the shit that that they're gonna have to deal with, um, and uh, you know. Uh, Luna sees Curry Bon and is like, oh my god, what's wrong, Oomphy? Uh, and Leo's like, oh, are, are you talking to the spirits again? And then Trudge overhears this and goes, the, talking to the spirits? What is she, stupid? <laughs> well, she got the drain damage? <laughs> it's, it's so stupid. Uh, cause like this, this man has seen people's souls be removed from their bodies. He saw Martha disintegrate midair. But talking to dual spirits is uh, made up baby shit, really. <laughs> kind kind of stupid, kind of awful. Um, Luna starts hearing a voice in her head uh, asking for help, and she's like, "Well, guess it's my time." And uh, you know, she she goes to <laughs> she she goes to the great big dual world in the sky. <laughs> Thank you, Bio, for the edit. This is the I first mean, episode. <laughs> This is the first episode of Mill Mike where every single host has contributed at least one edit. Very proud let's of everybody go. this time. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, uh, giant beam of light snatches her out of the car, and Trudge looks and goes, Holy shit! Where the fuck is she? And he, he, in his infinite wisdom, as cop and idiot, believes that she fell out of the car. <laughs> and that's all that happened. So he's like, we're gonna stop. We're gonna get out. We're gonna shout for her. And Leo is like, she's not here, but okay. And then he starts shouting and going, Luna, you're not here, right? He's stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I think what would have made this episode even better. Because, like, your parents were like, don't turn the light on because you're blind somebody else or something. Yeah. yeah. 
so stupid. I think what would have made this episode better is if Monkey Man just like stepped out from behind the monkey pillar dressed as Luna, just like, I'm over here, brother. That would have been very funny, but very totally goes, weird after the last. He just looks at him and goes, Something's not right here. <laughs> you change your hair? Yeah, I did. How did you know? God. Um, yeah. So Leo Leo's looking around for Luna. He ends up at the monkey pillar. And uh the the dark signer just walks out and goes, There you are. I'm gonna <laughs> fucking get you. Uh, I'm sorry, I just keep picturing like they all get back to the group and like everyone's just uh, accepting this. They're just like, Thank God you're safe, Luna. How was your battle with that monkey guy? Well, you know, it was really tough. He was real strong. <laughs> Jesus. And then Trudge just goes, you all can know that that's him, right? <laughs> no, we can't let Trudge be smart. Not a single time. <laughs> he's, he's the only one. The stupidest one being the only one to notice is the funniest thing. Ugh. Um, yeah, so, so Monkey Guy kind of just summons the glyph. Uh, and then he goes, oh, I have the wrong twin. He goes, all right, I've been waiting for you, signer. Who are you? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, everybody sees the the light go up and the glyph appear, but they don't see their signer tattoos go off. So they're like, what are they cooking? What is happening over there? <laughs> they're like, uh, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, surely. Um, and, uh, th this, this monkey guy is so confident he he actively says to this child, non-signers can't beat us. And I'm like, one, how do you know that's the case? Um, but then I think back to Leo's prior duels and I go, he's not going to be the one to disprove that, unfortunately. He may be stupid. <laughs> he yeah. may be stupid. Um, and, you know, Leo, with his uh, masterful strategy, is like, what if I did a motherfucking infinite? Says child who has never gotten the infinite to fucking work. He has oh, never managed it. it a single time without it being hard countered, without it being immediately stopped, without the, the gameplay being disrupted in the middle of the combo. He has never successfully done the infinite. Imagine if the like the the characters in this anime had sentience and it's just like God fucking damn it, these writers. <laughs> just let me have one just let me have one cool moment for once, please. Okay, bio. Important question. Yeah. If you no. had to pick a single character no. in five Ds to give that sentience to, who would it be? Because I have my answer immediately. Mm. Uh Oh fuck! What's his name? What's that? What's you say his boyfriend's name? Jack. Jack. You're so right. To... That's the correct answer. I was also thinking Jack. I need to see him having sentence. Yeah, yeah. You see, my answer was Crow. That's fair. Crow is also a very that good. That would be pick. very funny. All right, Shora. Uh huh. If if you had to give like knowledge of the fourth wall and knowledge that they're in a, a fictional like story to any one character in Five Ds. Who would you give it to? You know, I would give it to Trudge just for the joke. Okay. Because he wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Look at yeah. Trudge just like, I can't stand any of you satellite scum. Crow turns towards the camera. Yes. Trudge was always everyone's least favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I'm right here. Uh, Tr Trudge is just like on his anti-satellite <laughs> rant in the background. And then Crow like over his shoulder turns to the camera and like, Sort of stage hey kids, whispers. Racism's bad. Don't do it. Crow stage whispers to the camera and just goes, A cab, am I right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Stay in drugs, don't do school, kids. Christ. Yep. Um Yeah, so you know, Leo Leo's really determined to do his motherfucking infinite. To the detriment of, of his actual gameplay. Uh, cause like he drops morph morphtronics on the field and they just get like yoinked from his control pretty quickly. Uh, meanwhile, Luna wakes up in like the dual spirit forest. Curry Bon is here. Umfi is here. I'm very happy to see him. I love him. I would die for him, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and she starts like making the trek 
to go and try to find the voice that was talking to her. I have to ask a question here. Uh-huh. So far, has AFD only been good for getting in the way and almost getting these children killed? Yeah. I mean, a AFD's initial pact with Luna was literally just, stay in the spirit world. Stay in a coma in real life. You don't need the real world. You don't need your brother. I think that this dragon's evil, actually. Yeah, this dragon is fucked up, bro. <laughs> I think we should toss this card into Mordor and make uh, Power Tool Dragon the new Signa Dragon. I just think Power Tool's neat. Power Tool is very cool. I do love him. He's just an oomphy. Uh, all right. Well, before <laughs> we get into covering episode 48, uh, we need to talk about oh. our funny fucking Ooh. ad break Ooh. so we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it short and sweet on this one uh hey did you know we have a twitter twitter.com slash millennium mic uh over there you can uh look at all of our edits that get uploaded after each episode of millennium mic um we'll tease new guests we'll announce when there are changes in the schedule um if you want to, like, send us edits that you've made for a batch of episodes, we'll we'll try to retweet those. Um, you know, it, it's it's also uh, the day of recording this. Our anniversary on Twitter! Oh, shit! Oh, shit. It's our Twitterversary. I'm not... I, how do you even say that with an X? I don't know. Does, it's Twitter. Does that, does that mean that it's also the podcast anniversary itself? I don't think we made the Twitter on the same day as think... the anniversary of the podcast. I think that would mean that it's past our anniversary. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure our anniversary is somewhere in August. Hold on. Let me... Let me see something. Uh... Happy anniversary! Either way. Yeah. Look at us moving up in the world. Years ago. Fun. Uh... August 29th was when our first episode went live, so we're a month late to our anniversary. I blame KZ yeah. for that one. Yeah. Wow, you're blaming him when he's not even here? Okay. Exactly! He got flown back. It's really funny. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, beyond us having a Twitter, did you know we have a Patreon? At <laughs> patreon.com slash Millennium Mike. And no, did you really? know... Did you know, for as little as five bucks a month, you get access to fun and cool bonuses like our movie commentary tracks for Yu-Gi-Oh! Movie Pyramid of Light and Dark Side of Dimensions. And when we watch it, Bonds Beyond Time will be on there as well with the commentary. So if you want to watch those and get our reactions as you watch, you can do that. You'll, you'll have to find your own copy of the movies, but like, you can do that. Uh, you also get access to archives of past Mill Mike stream VODs. And you get uh, early access for a whole week to episodes of our bonus content like M4S, our Master Saga, whose second episode... Where the masters go to play. Second episode of M4S is up right now for patrons. So, uh, you know, once you're done listening to this, you can go and watch that a whole week before everybody else. Yeah. You so, can feel really special about your life. Yeah. It's great. Um, Definitely not trying to fill an empty void that sits there growing every day. Yeah! Well, you know what else fills the void? Huh? Money. Uh, <gasps> so It does. It's true. We have various tiers of patronage, and we appreciate uh, any way that you can help, but... At certain tiers, you get extra benefits, like our Blue Eyes White Dragons are $25 tier, getting their names on screen and in the description for every single episode. Mel Mike, thank you very much. Beyond that, we have our Forbidden Ones, our $50 tier, and we've got a couple new Forbidden Ones for this, uh, for this episode. So thank you very much. Zombie Slayer 51, <laughs> Proto Kiri. Oh, good. And Morphtronic's strongest soldier. Let's go. Good for you, dude. 
Thank you, Leo, oh, for stealing your mom's credit card and becoming a patron of the Millennium <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> I'm gonna call you on my cell phone. Ugh. <laughs> you see, Drake would be the kind to. Uh, I'm not uh, gonna stop. get into it. Shut up! No! 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 Thank you very much to our Forbidden Ones. And last but certainly not least, our God Cards, our hundred dollar patron tier. Thank you, Shiny Mew. We appreciate you. Hey, Shiny Mew. Don't we tell everyone you. else, but you're our favorite one. I'm not. No. I love all our it's patrons. Because you're raw. Play. Well, I do like that they picked Raw. I, they have yeah. good taste. I'm not saying that any one patron is my favorite, because any way that you can help help us out and support us is very much appreciated. And if you cannot help us financially, because Lord knows it is rough out here. Oh yeah. Lord knows it is difficult for everybody right now. Oh yeah. Um, if if you, you see, huh? My favorite Mill Mike Patreon patron patron and viewer is you. I'm pointing at you. Yeah, you, you listening to this. I'm pointing at you. Oh, shit. For real? On God? Just like Just that. Just like that. If, if you want to help uh, support us and you don't have the means financially, don't worry. Because if you share the podcast with people that you think would enjoy it, if you talk about it, if you retweet our thumbnail edits, that's support. That is still supporting us. You are doing now, your part. You, on the other hand, you, on the other hand, I know what you did last summer. You're not getting away with that. You know, they're making another one of those. They're, ma Shouldn't. they're making... No, they got Freddie Prince Jr. back for it. They're making another one of those movies. <laughs> I know what you were doing when we did GX. Huh? You filthy fuck. Huh? Whoa! Mm -hmm. What? Um, <laughs> hey, does anybody else have anything to advertise before we cut to our dipships ad? Don't um, forget to check out M. I went, what is ours? M4S. The M4 Masters S. are out to play. I almost said 5S because I've been thinking about it. I think one of these Masters is out to pasture now. <laughs> Check out episode I'm, uh... two. Watch it. Fuck you, Bio. I hate your guts. Check out oh. our saga. It's good. All right, Bio, <laughs> you can go on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I love you. <laughs> I, uh, my, I'm, I'm closing up on the uh, script of the, the Psychology of Zaynar video, so that'll be out soon. Wow! Hell yeah! Yeah, it's like 20 plus pages long. I, it's been, Shit! It's been a lot of work. But I'm super excited. I think people will like it. Yeah, I'm I'm excited, because, like, Xehanar is a character where there's a lot to dig into, so mm -hmm. oh, I am yeah. curious. <sighs> uh, any more takers before I, I cut us over? Mega Man. Super Fighting Robot? That's all. <laughs> that, that's... Holy shit. The podcast is on hold, but there is a program advanced podcast. It exists. Maybe it'll come back someday. Maybe we'll just say fuck it and we'll we'll jump straight to like D D Digimon or Dot Hack or. I don't, know, I don't fucking know. At some point I'm gonna make Carl do the forecast. That'll be great. Everyone harass the Calamity Carl on Twitter. Tell him that we all have to get together and predict the forecast. <laughs> Spelled with a four. Are we going to watch Fighting Foodons? We could. Oh, hell yeah. I love Fighting Foodons. Uh... Who would win Italian or Chinese? Uh, get me out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm cutting us to the dipship sad. All right. We'll see you in a minute. Do you enjoy boating? How about listening to some friends tell a few stories and talk about their weeks? Then I've got just the podcast for you. Dipships, the legitimate boating podcast. Every week, Carl, PM, Medi, and Nick get together and tell their favorite stories and recap what's been going on in their lives and talk about boating too, I guess. Check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Podbean. And we'll see you on the Nautical Mile.
Oh, we're back. Oh, hello. Whoa! Oh, boy. All right. Uh, did you hear that? Huh? Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's time to talk about episode 48. <laughs> When Mark when this guy loses, do you think when this guy loses, do you think he's gonna shout all my apes gone? No, no, unfortunately not. But that would fuck. Be really how funny. did I not think of that as a goddamn? No, well, actually, no. That would make me redraw an NFT. No, that's yeah. Not no, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Zaman Monkey King as a board ape would be very funny, but it also requires engaging with the NFT stuff on any level. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I I would draw that, and then those board ape people would actually fucking steal it as an NFT, and I'd have to get like involved with trying to sue somebody <laughs> yeah um instead i'm i'm just going to leave a uh you know a funny little edit of the contents of episode 48 for everybody yeah uh yeah <laughs> oh, that's yeah. it yeah so uh leo in episode 48 is experiencing the horrors of dueling for his fucking life and luna in episode 48 gets whisked away to narnia by a fucking lion it's very funny <laughs> it's great incredible uh i I wanted to do something with, and this is going to sound like nonsense to people who don't know it. Does everyone here know the, like, open RP post from Tumblr with Mob from Mob Psycho and Aslan from Narnia? No. With the I fucking think sprite? very vaguely. Hold on. What? Because I, if I can, this... if this is one whole image like it was when I looked it up, um... Then I can just, like, take you through the journey. There we go. There we go. Somebody curated this on, on uh, Reddit. All right. Uh, very big image. So I'm just going to do my best to, uh, you know, take you through it. Open RP. Hey, guys, I picked up some snacks from the corner store today. Would anyone like some? Ah, oh, Aslan of Narnia wonders if you bought any Sprite. Eh? <laughs> Talking lion? Oh, sorry, Aslan. Sam, uh -huh. they only had Sierra Mist. I hope that's okay. And he just hands it to him. Oh, I've never tried one. Let me. Oh, what is this flavor? Oh, it's fucking good. <laughs> so I wanted to make something like this, but Luna is Mob and Regulus is Aslan, and nothing was coming to me because the joke for this requires so much setup. I couldn't actually this make it. It requires so much. It's, it requires so much, but you see why I wanted to do it. It's It's iconic. This is like one of the best Tumblr posts ever. It's phenomenal. Jesus Christ. I love I love open RP, Mob and Aslan. It's the funniest shit. <laughs> uh but yeah, um you know, uh <laughs> you say kind of figures out um that the the glowing sigil in the sky and no sign or tattoo glow means that Leo is probably in some deep shit. Cuz you say is smart. So, so you say he's managed to put two and two together and uh, decides to turn the fuck around from, from where he was riding off uh, on his dual runner. Uh, Leo, Leo keeps, uh, you know, dropping his Morphtronics uh, and he, he, he tries to cook up uh, something. Just a little plan. Uh, meanwhile, Luna is running through the forest trying to save Ancient Fairy Dragon uh, and get back to her world before Leo gets in some deep shit. Oh, sweetie, if, if you only knew. Um, and uh, she, she remembers a conversation she had with Ancient Fairy Dragon years ago about, uh, about how, you know, if there was ever trouble, uh, its servant Regulus would, uh, you know, would show up, help out. And, uh, you know, to set me free, join up with my lion. So she ends up in uh, a dual spirit city, uh, which is empty. Nobody's here. It's fucking weird. They're all dead. Then a bunch of monkeys show up. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's. it's I don't even I don't actually think. Under, I don't. I don't know if I followed this part. It's a little weird. At all. I I would understand if you didn't. Um. So. It's it's a little funky because I don't think these monkeys are actually based on any kind of like dual monster. I think they're just original they are designs. Not. They're they're just random monkeys. Yeah. Um. Lu Luna and Curryborn are trying to run away from them, trying to keep uh keep themselves safe, and uh, she stumbles into this kid who's wearing dark magician uh gear, uh, a running theme in this batch you'll find of people stealing Mahad's shit 
from his closet when he's not looking. It's fucked up. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, what the fuck? And so the, this kid, underneath, like, the cobblestones of the street, lifts one up and goes, Psst, hey, you're not from here, are you? <laughs> hey, you Come on, we gotta get you out of here. <laughs> uh, uh, so this this child manages to, like, help Luna duck and weave through buildings and try to explain to her what's going on. Uh, I I wrote down here after uh you know after she almost gets caught and Karibon does get caught along with her other dual spirits. Mm -hmm. I was just like, is is everything involving these kids gonna suck? Because I really hope not. We I was had... not a fan of Luna's adventures in Spirit Land. Yeah, it's not the best. Uh, regrettably. Uh, we opened on two of the most heart-wrenching episodes of 5Ds I've ever seen, and then we're immediately back to mid. So, yeah. um, yeah, so these monkeys, their staffs, if, if they catch the dual spirits, they're locked in stone tablets, like we're back in, uh, in, uh, ancient Egypt. It's fucked up, but, uh, you, you, you know how it is, uh, in the, the dual spirit world. It's, uh, Shit's kind of fucked all the time. That's just how it goes. <laughs> There's no, like, joy or whimsy to be found in a world that should be nothing but joy and whimsy. Being a dual spirit must fucking suck, huh? Yeah, no, it's gotta just absolutely be the worst. Like, every every other Tuesday, you're going through a new fucking, like, catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. This time it just happens to be monkeys. Yep. Um, but, like, fucking... If you're not careful, it's like, oh, what's what's on the docket for this week? Hmm? Oh, the the fucking great leviathans coming back to eat all of us. Cool. And uh, and and next week, ah, oh, Zork, got it. I'm right. excited seeing all the old dual monsters. It's like there's Key Mace, the Zam Warrior number one. Yeah, Hanawa shows up. up Moki Moki. Yeah. They got all the hits. All Happy of our lover. own fees. trapped in the stone. They love all showing dead. the little guys. Uh-huh. Because the little guys are easier to draw. Yeah. Um, so here's here's a thought here. Yeah. What is stopping any of these spirits mm -hmm. from grabbing any of the needles that are just all over the fucking place mm -hmm. and using them? Uh, they are simply little guys. And there are many monkeys who would assault them. Okay, but the, 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 the staffs are literally everywhere when no one is around, also. Because there was one just sitting under that tree. Like, they could have just grabbed any of them and just went, and now we fight. Well, you see, the problem is that apes together are strong. <laughs> Fuck, you're so right! <laughs> so Apes together strong! How can I forget the most basic rule of nature? Truly. I don't, I don't understand how this just slipped your mind. Um, so, this monkey deck is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Because you have um, Fighter Ape, who's the most boring design I think I've looked at in 5Ds. At the very least in the past, like, three episodes of Melmike. It's it's one of the most boring designs. Not the worst, but boring. It's it's just a guy in a helmet who punched good. Yeah, uh, basically. Then you have Magician Ape, who once again is stealing Mahad's clothes from his closet when he's not looking. What the fuck? Put that back. That doesn't belong to I love you. How, I love how that's just the fucking, like standard uniform for all magicians in Duel Monsters is the fucking Mahat look. Yeah. No, I think it's really charming. I, I think it's good to have, like, that through line with uh, all the, like, legitimate spellcasters, I'll say. Just because oh, there are what? some... He's, he's not a legitimate spellcaster? What, because he's an ape? Well, he's wearing the fit, <laughs> so, like... Apes, I... can si a apes can cast spells, too. I almost said science. That's the wrong thing. It's entirely <laughs> different magic and science. Uh, and then Dark Tuner Dark Ape, who doesn't have an actual card. He's like exclusively part of the anime and he sucks and he's gross and I hate him. Yeah, it's awful. I it's hate awful. him so much. But then Zemin the Ape King. His card art is ass, but he's cool as hell because he's just Sun Wukong. Dude, more like dumb Wukong. Got him. Okay. So that was uh, another thing I wrote was mm -hmm. just wait. You're all spellcasters. Could you idiots not use spells on them? Yeah. 
Um, there, there was a thing that I wrote in my notes. Um, that, you know, watching in a group sometimes fuels really good bits. Uh, and one of those really good bits that I didn't end up making into an edit because I can't redraw these motherfuckers to save my life. Shadow Wizard Monkey Gang. We love casting spells. No, they don't, because where the fuck are the spells they're casting? They're not casting shit. Tell me where they the cast spells. The negative shot. The negative shot. That's not a spell. They use their spear. That does that for them. That's not spell casting. Yeah, it's a magic, it's a magic spear shooting magic spells. Okay, but then you're not casting it. You're just shooting. It's like firing Checkmate. a gun. You're not casting bullet. You're just, hit, you're just pulling a trigger. Are you sure? Yeah. Have you not heard of the iconic catchphrase, I cast gun, prepare to meet God? I have not. What the fuck? It's, it's a good one. I cast gun, prepare to meet God. That's a good, that's a good fucking old, old thing. I got very excited when uh, Luca just like bent over to pick up Dark Magician Kid. Yeah. And it's just like, you're going to guide me where to go, right? And he goes, Umu. And I was like, is that spell reference? Kunji no cash spell. That's great. Because it's the thing that, it's the thing that Zatch says a lot. Is he goes, Umu. That's great. Um, this Cat child's face. name is Tarunka. I forgot this immediately and had to look it up several times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forgot fuck? his name was Tarunka. What the fuck? Tarunka. Uh, it's... Tarunka. Well, no, you don't roll the R. I'm just, like, putting emphasis. You did. Uh, All right, then. we're on the same page. Okay, good. Yeah, glad to hear it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we got through that amicably. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Fucking so, tired, dude. The duel, we did stop fighting. That was the point. So, uh, the the duel's going about as you as well as you would expect. Leo keeps trying to perform his motherfucking infinite. He can't. He's incapable of doing it successfully. Uh, he gets counterplayed at basically every turn. But uh, you, you say, who who's arrived now and is watching Leo duel, is realizing that this kid actually accounted for being counterplayed. He's no longer just trying to do the infinite. He's also like actively he's actually trying to do strategy. Yeah, he's he's actively like reading his opponent's moves and reacting to them instead of just being like, I'm gonna do my thing. I'm playing a single player game. Uh, yeah, this is this is not Luna or this is not Leo going. I need to make this look good for the fucking fans. This is this is Leo going. If I don't win, I'm dead. Yes. Uh, going through and seeing if there's anything else that's relevant. Um, Tarunka in the spirit world tells Luna that this used to be like a really fun populated place. There were umfis everywhere, but now the umfis are stone. The um the umfis are stone tablets, and they took the umfis and they, uh, they they fucked it up. The I guess is... you could say that they all got stoned. No, I would not say that. They all they all got they all got stoned. I wouldn't. I they they got turned into rocks. All the Carl, all the dual all the dual monsters the dual monsters they all got. Stoned. Don't. Carl, they fucking got Wadapon. Is this a joke to you? They don't. They got them. They, they got Wadapon stones. Well, Wadapon is fucking dead. Is this a joke to you? They got Wadapon in boxes. Please DM me. <laughs> <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> oh God. Um. Yeah. So, um, Luna explains to Tarunka why she's here. That she's like here to save Ancient Fairy Dragon, who she needs to help her save uh, her world. And that she needs Regulus's help to do it, but that, uh, you know, she can't find Regulus. And so Tarunka's like, nah, I'll handle it. He's in the forest. We'll go to the forest. So they go to the forest. Uh, <laughs> and as, as they're going, they get chased by the monkeys who finally see them. But they set up, like, a very funny trap. Uh, all of the Luna stuff feels like it's Looney Tunes-esque. Yeah. To some degree, which is so tonally out of place with her brother is fighting for his fucking life. Yeah. It's, uh, re really bogs down the back half of this batch a fair bit. Uh, especially when four episodes are dedicated to this, because you're going between two stories. Yeah, lines. I didn't expect this to be four episodes. I thought, like, three at most. Two at least. Yeah, I mean, if you split and then it up, just keeps going. If you split up the runtime that they dedicate to Leo and Luna's segments, 
they're each getting like two episodes fully and two episodes is the longest we see a duel go for i just think the pacing of this wasn't great we could have done this in three this could have been uh yeah shorter uh, uh they finally meet up with uh what's his name reginald regulus regulus mm -hmm. they meet up with regulus after uh Tr trinaka told luca that you know he was biting everyone and attacking them yeah so regulus and, uh, is fucked up bro <laughs> He got fucked up in a bunch of fights, and he's also got a little, a little, a little ankle bracelet that they don't notice until next episode. Yeah, so I, I think I'm gonna stop like dividing this up into episodes, and I'm just gonna talk about like the things as they happen because I don't want to keep you here longer than you want to be here. I don't want to be talking about this longer than you want to be hearing about it. Oh, Shibuya so... fucking hates our audience, Jesus. No, <laughs> if I hated fuck? them, I would go into excruciating detail on every single episode of like the Leo Luna shit. I'm summarizing it all into one coherent thing instead. So with with regards to the Luna plotline, they get one of the monkey stabs, they figure out that, like, it can manipulate gravity. And they also figure out, by overhearing the monkeys loudly talking about it, that two negatives make a really big positive and, like, negates the minus. Um, hey, I'm very glad that the monkeys are stupid enough to just shout this all out loud. It's like... You guys are really awesome. You're great at your jobs. Hold on. Did I not save this? Hold on. Hold on. I have to... I had one more edit I made that I guess just is not... Um, I could not remember here. the name of this Earthbound Immortal, so I just kept writing down different things. I wrote down a Kaka Pee Pee, a Chupa Cola, a Chupa Chups, and then Uzaru, the Destroyer! Yeah, for some reason, this didn't save uh, when I made it. Th thank God I showed it to somebody, uh, so I had Damn. to back up. So they figure out that uh, two negatives make a really big positive, and they manage to, um, you know, they trick Regulus into attacking in a way where they can, like, touch the spear that they have to his ankle restraint. Uh, blowing up the ankle restraint, blowing up the tree trunk that they are on above, like, a, a river that leads to a very steep waterfall. Uh, and they start floating downstream. Regulus, uh, now in his right mind, is like, Oh god, the kids! Oh shit, oh fuck! They're gonna fucking die! Uh, so he, like, grabs onto them for dear life. They fall off the waterfall. And Luna Midair has a realization. We can just reverse gravity. So she does that on the staff, and they just, like, pause, and then reverse. In the most loony- Cartoonishly goofy way possible. Gravity rush would be like. That's a very good uh, good bit with making that extra Looney Tune, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the most Looney Tunes we've been, I think, in 5Ds. Um, so, everybody's fine now. We're good on that front. Uh, meanwhile, Leo, in the middle of this duel... Uh, he's, he's dealing with uh, Monkey Guy putting down a field spell that makes his ape king that he summoned, because he summons uh, Zemin the ape king. Uh, you know, it gets an attack boost for every monkey in his grave. Uh, it has 3k now. He's big. Apes together strong, once again. Um, oh, yes, when uh, Regulus had the, the ankle bracelet on, everything he heard was, like, the opposite. Yeah. Which was awesome when they finally figured it out and the little magician starts shouting like, I hate you, you stink, you're an idiot. And then he just goes, do you think flattery will get you anywhere? <laughs> very good bit. Yeah, v very funny bit. Um, Leo's able to get power tool dragon on the field, but... um, They do this really weird effect every time Luna like, speaks to regulars, by the way. Hmm? Where they actively show you like the opposite of what like what Regulus is hearing, and they just keep flashing a skull over <laughs> Luna's face every time. It's so fucking it's weird. very funny. What's the opposite of a living child? A, a dead, dead one. Exactly. Oh shit. That's the that's that's the point. Yeah, that's the visual. 
It's, so it's just funny. No, it's very goofy like, the way they do. And it. you could stop have, her from being dead, Mr. Officer. You just have to find the location. I have a screenshot. God. This this is what it flashes to every time she starts talking while he has the ankle bracelet on. <laughs> yeah, you got them. And goofy as hell. It yeah, fades yeah. in and out during the conversation. It's so bad. Yeah. It's fucking funny. I love I that particular spot when they're like, oh, that makes him hear like everything negative, right? And then mm-hmm. she just walks out and is like hey, I'm trying to help you. And I was like, did you not just say that he's going to hear the yeah, opposite? Seriously. <laughs> mm-hmm. The whole time I'm like, just say the opposite. Just say we're here to hurt you. Oh, Don't yeah. let us put this near your ankle. We're going to kill you. We're going to beat you to death with hammers. Well, knowing oh, you're that, going to free me. Thank knowing so their much. luck, he would hear what they're actually saying when they I was honestly waiting for it to be like, oh, the negative things still come through. Yeah. It only changes the positive things. That would have been funny. But... Yeah, that, that would have been incredibly good. But now, it's, now such luck. Um, but these are monkeys. They can't be smart. Uh, uh, Leo's getting outplayed, but he's he's still managing to you know survive against this man who's basically fine with child murder. Uh, and you know, Leo has this play that he tries to do. With Megamorph. And I screamed and I went, what the fuck do you mean they're using Megamorph in, like, 2009 when this would have been airing? That's awesome. Uh, and, uh, so he equips Megamorph to Power Tool Dragon. And then its attack doesn't change. That's fucked up. Why didn't it change? Uh, fine print! Megamorph doesn't work if your life points are the same as your opponent's. Yeah! You just forgot yeah. that. So... It, it's such a... It's funny because this is a legitimate mistake i could see a kid making with something like megamorph because megamorph how often is it the case that that condition procs it's so it's rare really rare so it's, it's i don't know if i'd say it's rare like, it's just like you you like gotta keep your life points lower megamorph. yeah yeah it's 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 very funny um and Dvac sees this and calls the kid a quote ignorant fool. Very funny. Oh, it's very funny. He's just like destroying this small child's life. Yeah. <laughs> he he's gonna fucking destroy this kid. Uh so once Regulus is free of the minus energy or bracelet or whatever. Um Luna explains the situation, explains that ancient fairy dragon is trapped, and explains why she's here. And what she needs to do. And Regulus is like, yeah, I'll help you. Uh, that's, that's kind of my job. She was right to tell you to come find me. Um, and then Zemin uh, starts doing his evil thing, sucking up all the life force. And they're like, well, we got to rush to that castle and kill him. Or you guys are going to devolve into nothing. Yeah. And the spirit world's going to crumble. Yeah. So uh, Zemin's goal uh, is, is to just like fill the world with minus energy. So, this was the edit I made. Uh, I don't know God. how many people are going to understand the reference. Is it fucking Spy Kids? Close. No, but that's no. Shark Boy that's Shark, Boy Shark Boy and Lava, Lava Girl. Girl. Because <laughs> right. the kid Linus becomes Minus. What a fucking I remember, loser. Uh, I yeah. remember the, like, the end of that movie where... They like stop fighting for a second, and he's like, <laughs> "Brainstorm." Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, all these it's like, goofy out of the sky. as fuck. I I love <laughs> Shark Boy and Lava Girl because it's so oh, like God. unapologetically goofy. I, you gotta respect that shit. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. So Luna and Tarunka have to get to the castle where Ancient Fairy Dragon is being held, and they have to come up with a plan. Uh, and you know. The plan they end up coming up with, again, very goofy, kind of Looney Tunes, but it actually works far better than expected. So what they do is they come to Zemin's castle posing as spellcasters. They have uh, masks to hide their face, and Tarunka has the outfit, but they like keep their mouths covered, uh, and they come with uh, the staff wrapped up so he can't tell it's a stolen one of his. And he's like, oh, I can control Ancient Fairy Dragon. I'll show you by controlling Regulus. Ooh. Regulus is in a cage behind them, and Regulus is just chilling. He's just vibing. Uh, Zemin is kind of suspicious, and he's like, 
What do you mean? Can He's you... not suspicious at all. He's no. just like, oh, you can? Oh, sick. Hell yeah. No, uh, there's... But if you're lying to me, I'll kill you. No, but there is a point where he, like, actively is like, are you sure you can control Regulus? And then Luna's like... Yeah, I oh, can. Yeah. I'll start by making him kill every one of your guys in this room. And he's like, no, 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 goes, no, 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 okay. it's not necessary. You can do it. Yeah, you don't have to do that. That's fine. I believe you. <laughs> There's the one moment of doubt and she's like, I'll kill all these bitches. And he's like, no, no. He goes, a compelling bargain. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Luna starts like making up chance. And this child is surprisingly calm in the face of danger. Like, this this kid should be freaking out. She knows what she's and... doing. No, she's just chill. I'm sick of all this monkey business. I'm about to go bananas. Go fucking ape shit. Yeah, man. I don't like this monkey freak. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the monkey shit either. Um, hold on. I was like, all right, so now you're, you're close with them. You're friends with them. Put some poison in his drink. Slit his throat. Gouge out his eyes. Okay. Um, As it should be. Moving on to episode 50. Happy! Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead. We finally get to see Kusilu, Kusuka, Kugisaki, Kusito. Kusko. Uh huh. Kusilu. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, He's there's, going to summon him. there's a portal in Zemin's castle. That uh, you know, can take them to ancient fairy dragon, and uh, the Zemin. You good? I just moved my mic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Zemin is is like unchain ancient fairy dragon, release it. Uh, and yeah, he does just to like sh show them uh where it's being kept. Uh, yeah. uh, he starts freeing AFD. Yeah. And then in the middle of him doing this, the stupid little wizard fucker trips. And when the, it trips her also, and when they both get up, the wrapping on the staff comes off. And immediately, not even trying to play up anything, the little bastard goes, That's right. We tricked you, idiot. Stupid. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't don't just drop the act immediately. No, he's gonna drop the act immediately because he is stupid. Dude cannot stop gambling. Let's go gambling! Let's go gambling. Oh dang it! In his in his mind, he's like, I can't stop winning, and in reality, it's oh dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, I forgot about this. So, uh, once once Luna's uh disguise comes off. Uh, one of the monkeys recognizes her from the town that they were in. I didn't know the town was called Schwank. 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 Um, yeah, so the monkeys are like, that's no magician, that's a hack fraud! And they're, <laughs> they're pissed, they're gonna get these kids, they're gonna, like, tear them apart as monkeys do. Um, and Regulus is like, fuck no. Regulus jumps in uh, to, you know, take one for the team. Oh, he eats a bunch of monkeys. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, Zemin starts screaming that they'll never have Ancient Fairy Dragon. And... Uh, and he... they do their positive clash. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Regulus takes the staff and goes after him himself to do the big positive energy clash. And in the real life, a uh, power tool is like equipped with a bunch of equip cards to destroy the uh, what's his name's thing the zemin that is on the field in the pool. yes yes yeah so zemin uh, in both worlds just is destroyed very funny that fucking z-man is here to look kind of intimidating but does fuck all very funny yeah yeah honestly this character is more intimidating in the actual fucking game like, in Reverse of Arcadia, Z-Man the Ape King, the spirit one is a boss that you have to duel against. Shit. That's scary. Anyway, after that ape got destroyed, I, I made a little edit and sent it over to Shibuya. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Ooh. I, did... I was kind of happy with it. 
Nice argument. However, I have already depicted myself as the sleek power tool dragon, and you <laughs> as the seething ape. <laughs> this one is very good. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty good. happy with it. That's pretty good. <sighs> Fuck this stupid ape. Me and my friends hate this one monkey in particular. Yep. So, so yay, Z Z Man's defeated in the spirit world, and st things are kind of back to normal, but not really. Yeah, not but really. Fucking our our dipshit little kid is turned back into an adult, and plot twist, he's Dark Sage, what, I guess. Yeah, what do you mean he's fucking Dark? What do you mean Dark Sage is a piece of shit idiot child? Huh? Yeah, that was real. crazy. <laughs> like yeah. the entire time, I was like, this is gonna turn out to be like. A weird dark magician esque character. Please tell me this isn't supposed to be Dark Sage. And then I'm he so was Dark mad. Sage. I'm so fucking mad. He's it's Dark like, Sage. So is Dark Sage not Mahad? Yeah, when we see Dark Sage in DM, he's explicitly like only made via Time Wizard Dark Magician. But I guess the spirit of Dark Sage is separate to the spirit of Dark Magician. He's just part I of guess. the archetype. I don't know. I don't no, expect there to be any. Dark. Not a huge fan. I don't expect there to be any like real connections between seasons that make sense. Yeah. The sad thing is, the thing that like the thing that immediately gave it away to me was the constant joking of, "Oh my sciatica." Fair. Wow, the you're old sciatica. Oh, you're gonna be dark sage. I hate this. Yeah. So. uh... Divac is delighted that his Zemin was defeated because that sets the stage for his funny, big, earthbound immortal monkey. Uh, and he basically DMs this child with this. He just sent. Thank you, Shara. He just sent some fucking chat. Yeah. Uh, good shit. Excellent work. Um, and he, he summons his funny monkey, which is by far the funniest earthbound immortal. Because the 3D model for Kusulu, uh, the, just the way he moves, I don't know what it is. He's goofy. Very fun. Unfortunately, this one doesn't sacrifice people's lives, I guess. Okay. Yeah, nobody's soul was snatched up in this one, which uh, seems oh, a little weird. Unless, nope. It sacrifices spirits, though. Yeah, so all those dual spirits that were in the stone tablets. Hmm. Rest in it's peace, Wadapon, again. It's fine. They go through this like every other fucking fucking Tuesday. We we've been over this. Going through it multiple times doesn't make it any easier, though. Is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, Imagine being like that one Wadapon who's like, "I was around for the Great Leviathan. I ain't fucking doing this shit again." God. Uh, yes. You better kill me. You so better put me in the fucking ground. Jesus. So, um, yeah, he, he goes to attack Leo directly with the big monkey. Mm -hmm. And it can't be affected by spells and traps. And, uh, mm, he still has the field spell that makes monkeys stronger when there's dead monkeys. But Kusulu is uh -oh. at 3,600. And... It's all right, Leo got better. Uh, mm, Leo, Leo's getting his ass beat. He, he's getting attacked directly. That's and... right. Uh, Dark Sage uses the last of his powers to uh, send Luca back to her world. And then she shows up next to her brother and goes, why did you fight, you fucking idiot? Yeah. Why the fuck did you do, you moron? Uh-huh. It's okay. I'm going to pilot your deck better than you've ever fucking done. Yeah. yeah. Genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck do you have on the field? Oh, you got power tool dragon out? Wow, I'm actually Say impressed. it with me, everyone. Girls, get shit done. They sure do. Uh, it's, it's funny because, um, Leo and Luna, like, are each other's rock in this. And you're, uh, oh, yeah. I, I was just thinking back to, like, when she said she would only do this if her brother was there. And I'm like, damn. Yeah, you weren't kidding. You really, really do need him, huh? <laughs> like... She's the competent one, but he's the emotionally intelligent one, to at least some degree. At least when it comes to her needs. They're very in, in tune with each other. Um, so, she, so she comes in, she takes his dual discs, she takes over the duel, uh, which is legal, I guess. 
And then this fucking dude just goes, here's my trap card that will allow me to just synchro summon a synchro monster without using any materials. Here's your AFD, idiot. Yep. Uh, and then immediately, uh, I don't remember fully, used an effect to protect his monster from destruction by sacrificing it. Yeah, putting it in the grave. Yeah. Great, great decision, bud. Yeah. Sure would be a shame if there was a way to get it out of the grave. Sure would oh, be a shame no. if she activated, uh, what is this called here? Respect Synchro? And just went, I want my card back. Yeah. You, n never put monsters that uh, your opponent could benefit from in the graveyard, idiot, because there's too much shit that pulls from the graveyard. So, yeah, she okay. she drops Respect Synchro and she gets uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon back. And then you she see the entire time bad mouthing Divac the like as she does it too. She's like, "Yeah, great job, stupid. That's exactly what I wanted you to do." Yeah, no, it's really good. It's it's really good to see the kids trash talking the adults for a change. Uh, and as Ancient Fairy Dragon is uh, being brought back from the grave, you hear Regulus just shouting, uh, biting through the chains that bind it, and then he disappears. So, finally, this bitch is unleashed in all of her full glory, or perhaps um, uh, all, all of her full, like, disrespect towards kids, who knows? Um, she gets back on the proper side of the field and takes one look at this fucking monkey and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see, you see why I was breathless at this one, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Shora. Holy shit. Yeah. Front facing ancient fairy dragon. Oh, I fucking love it. Oh, it's awful. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. Oh, um, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> oh my god. Monkey. Monkey. Yeah. So um Eddie. So it's it's dipping shit against the world and both of their both of their ace monster dragons are on the field, finally. So they're doing this together, even if Luna's the one piloting the decks. So... She, she equips power tool with rocket damage. And ancient fairy dragon gets pain to power. Yeah. So that they can attack the uh, earthbound immortal with the, uh, the power tool. Yes. Take the damage that they took... And then use it to power up AFD. Yes. Yeah. It's genuinely a very sick combo. It is my favorite play because it was a really good combo. It is an incredible combo. Yes, I, I fully agree. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, we don't actually get the resolution to this duel. Nope. I was like, oh man, that play was really sick. That was really cool. And, what do you mean that's the end? They did exact lethal, but uh, we don't see the life points at zero. Like, so uh, that's fun. Uh -oh. If this gets negated by a trap card or something next set, I'm going to scream. But let's not worry too much about that. Uh, for now, let's go through our least favorite card in play. And I'm going to go ahead and start because I have KZs right here. Mm. Um, so, yeah, KZ sent me all of his. Um, his least favorite card, Magician Ape, an affront against God. <laughs> his words, not yep. mine, but I will agree with the sentiment. So true. You know, fair. Um, Magician Ape wasn't great. However, I think Turret Warrior is such a waste of potential. You name a thing Turret Warrior and then you make it look boring as shit. Unforgivable. Okay. You're Yu-Gi-Oh. Why does Be better. Though, give the vibe of uh, Sephiroth? What does what give the vibe of Sephiroth? The, the fighter ape card. <laughs> I mean, <God. laughs> oh my god. Um, it's probably just because it looks like the fire in Nibelheim in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so let me uh, throw this god. on screen for our audience to see. Uh, yeah, literally the reason it gives you Sephiroth is because of the flames in the back. That's it. Hate it. <laughs> All right. Anyone else have a least favorite card they want to drop? 
<laughs> Sorry, I looked at the fucking front facing game and just killed uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's great. Um, at least the record <laughs> is underground arachnid. It's disgusting. It's awful. I hate it. Fair. My least favorite play was the Earthbound token shit because it's dumb, stupid, idiot, dumb, moron, dumb, idiot shit. Okay, well, if we're also dropping least favorite plays, um, KZ's least favorite play, um, the horrible children getting Martha killed put them in a hole. So you know, true. Fair. So true. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, my least favorite play was uh, on the other end of the spectrum, making a child kill themselves. Rest in peace, Rally. Yeah. Foul. Horrid. Awful. <laughs> Nightmarish. File? <laughs> uh. Um. Trying to decide between the underground arachnid or uh, the magician ape because both look horrible in two different ways. Yep, this is true. <laughs> both that's my that's my answer okay. um that's fair for lisa play luna try like deducing that the the staff would do like then the opposite of what she said and then walking out and speaking the truth that was the worst play i've ever seen that's fair and uh shora did you say your least favorites uh, no, I haven't. It's okay. it's very difficult for me this week, partially because my brain's fogged the hell up. Understandable. But if I have to choose, my least favorite play would definitely... I'm, I'm going to agree with KZ. Um, that child should feel bad. That child yep. should feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know, my, my least favorite monster might just be like underground arachnid, I guess. Yeah. I get it. All right. Uh, favorite card play. Once again, going to go over to KZ's. What did he send me? Oh, great. Uh, his favorite card, Power Tool, Power Tool Dragon. It's cool. Uh, his favorite play, Rally Killing Himself. <laughs> Thanks, KZ. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, all right. You know what they say? Fuck those games! Let them die! Uh, Put him right. in a hole! My favorite card was Regulus. I thought he was funny. Does it matter that he's not a card? No, I'm saying him anyway. Fuck you. My favorite play was was Luna using both her and her brother's dragons to represent like their bond to fucking kill this guy. Excellent. Love that. Love the symbolism. <laughs> My favorite card was also Power Tool Dragon. He's yeah. just really cool. He's a silly Power guy. Tool is just really neat. Power just Tool is really sick cool as hell. My play. favorite play was getting back AFD and doing the pain to power stuff because that was awesome. It was a good way to end out some kind of mid episodes. Yeah. We had to endure four episodes of this shit, but it ended on absolute peak. So. Yeah, I think uh, Luna coming back and just like girl bossing was pretty cool. Yeah. Good play. All of it. Um, I don't, I can't find the name of the card, but there was this cool looking blue robot in the first episode, but I don't remember what it was called, cool but I was like, I remember making blue a robot. robot. Episode 40. Or a blue monster. I don't know what it was, but I was like, yeah, uh, I'm cool. going to, I'm going to look in probably it. one of the monsters that was put into defense position. Cause that's when they turn blue. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Uh, I think hold on. It, I think it ended up being like used with a synchro. Or, Is like, it shield or wing? Maybe I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put. He said it was a robot. Well, no, I put monster in my notes. I hate you. Why? Write down the names. They say the names. They do say yeah. the names. To be fair. Shibuya, I need you to do me a favor. Oh. Which would you rather lose, Brogwood Dolphin or Brogosaurus? Um, if I had to pick one to lose. I think lose Brogwa Dolphin. Brogosaurus is too good. Okay. What? I'm killing one of your children. Thank God. I hate that. 
Oh god. Oh, okay, you're made I'm... Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I get to flashbang <laughs> people with this in other servers. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this rules. Um what the fuck do we call this sticker? Ancient smug? I don't know. Oh wait, no, fucking ancient monkey dragon. There we go. The monkey. God. Monkey. Excellent. There we go. New sticker for the server. Excellent. Um, yeah. Alright, Shora, your favorite card in play? Uh, you know what? Because of the sticker, I'm going to say my favorite card is Ancient Fairy Dragon this week. <gasps> okay. My favorite play is uh, Power Tool Dragon fucking rocket barreling through the monkey. Yeah. Alright. Um, has everyone said their shit, just to be clear? Everyone's uh, had their time to do it? Are you sure? Okay. Then, uh... I'm just gonna let everybody know that, uh, your wait for the next Millennium Mike episode, uh, is shorter. Partly because we took three weeks to get to this one, uh, and partly because in two weeks, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero comes out, and I know half of this call is not going to be able to record shit because they'll be too busy playing Sparking Zero. Uh, so, we're just gonna Maybe. do... That's fair. Uh, we're just gonna <laughs> do our next recording in a week. So, we record uh, No Like 5D's episode 11 covering episodes 51 to 55 of the anime on October 5th. Oh. So, you don't have to wait too long uh, to, to get more of us, but then after that we go back to the uh, on again, off again schedule. So, just keep an eye out on that. Um... Beyond that, is there anything anyone wants to say before I take us into the outro? Remember to kill... No. no. I'm not going to say that, no, actually. No, don't. Don't do that. Remember to spay and neuter your monkeys so that they don't multiply and spread negative energy? What? Minus one. Yeah, not a good one. Minus one's a good movie. You should watch Godzilla Minus One. It'll only fuck you up. I thought you were giving, I thought you were giving Carlos score. I was, <laughs> I was, and then I transitioned it into a good film that I watched. I did. Recently, me and my, so. I think me and my wife watched that. That's pretty good. Excellent movie. Uh, I watched it in a Discord call. There was that one scene in the city. I've, I've never heard that call go more silent. Everybody just was in horror. Very. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Man. I'm, Nah, it's all good. You can, you can go ahead and... Alright, uh, d uh... You clowns have fun. I'm gonna deafen and give us the outro. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to the Millennium Microphone. Uh, we would not still be here. We would not still be going, and we wouldn't still be able to power through uh, and make these episodes if not for your continued support. So thank you so much. Um, if you want to join us for live recordings, if you want to vote for which of our weekly edits ends up on the YouTube thumbnail... Uh, be sure to come to the live recordings. Uh, they will be the Saturday, the day before an episode goes up on um, you know, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, all, all those. Uh, the day before at 7.30 p.m. Eastern over on twitch.tv slash Shibuya Gato. Because, um, you know, sometimes voting on this stuff is real fun. And uh, you can join in the live chat. Uh, you can make funny jokes. You get to hear the jokes before anybody else. And isn't that neat? Until next time, we will see you next duel. <laughs>